rate based on how you buy. The Renaissance Festival is back. Weekends now through March 31st. Great shopping, a giant crafts market. New shows featuring sea fairies, mermaids, and merriment. Non-stop feasting and more. The Renaissance Festival is back. Weekends now through March 31st. Discount tickets available at Bashes and Food City or Arizona Renfestinfo.com. Presented by Delta Airlines, Bashes, Food City, Pepsi, Budweiser, and Geddes. You know, it seems like everybody's talking about the traffic on Valley Roads these days. You know what else everybody's talking about? The absolute best restaurant to take your family and friends to. Kasai Japanese Steakhouse. Now at two Valley locations. No one does it better than Kasai, where talented teppan chefs create the food, the fire, and the fun of teppanyaki. Kasai Japanese Steakhouse is dinnertainment at its best, where a delicious seven-course meal is prepared right at your table with flair. It is a perfect choice for any occasion. Choose from over 50 different items and combinations of teppanyaki. Looking for great dining without the show? Kasai offers an awesome selection on Asian inspired dishes and tasty sushi happy hour deals daily from 6 p.m and enjoy outdoor dining on the heated patio so whether you're here for spring training march madness or just to enjoy the arizona sunshine don't just take your guests to dinner you take them to kasai japanese steakhouse with two locations scottsdale and now in peoria at the 101 in northern go to kasai teppan.com that's k-a-s-a-i teppan.com or search kasai on your mobile phone do you need equipment for your business but don't have the cash? I can help. I'm Dylan Cohen at JR Capital, and we offer no money down financing on new and used equipment. Excavators, forklifts, dozers, tractors, cranes, plows, and more. If it's essential to your business, I will help you get the money you need. It's faster and easier than asking your banker. Call me, Dylan Cohen, at 602-834-7353. That's 602-834-7353. Or visit moneyradio.com and click on Finance with Dylan. Live from the Harmon Solar Studios in Scottsdale. Here we go. This is KQFN Tempe. Also transmitting on K25CD Phoenix at 99.3 FM and K240U Fountain Hills at 95.9 FM. All right, people, settle down. Because it's time. Time for what? Showtime. When does it start? Right now. Three, two, one. Let's get on with the show. Let's do it. Welcome, everybody, to a Tuesday edition of the Daily Blender. Jeffrey O'Brien, still out. So uh, you'll see him tomorrow, most likely. So you're stuck with, uh, with me. I'm Keon Rose. And uh, the legend himself, Randy White. No, please. Over at the White House. You're the sexiest man at Sports Talk Radio. Well, Come on. Look, I don't, I don't know about that, but... With a name like Keon Rose, come on, you've got to be. I, I, I've never said no to a compliment, though. Mm. So there, there that, that is. is. That is a compliment, my friend. We, we have a ton of stuff to get to today, Randy. And yes, it, we do. It, yeah. it's, a, it's a loaded slate. We've got uh, some talk here about the NFL rule changes. Uh, the, the kickoff play has been absolutely revamped. Uh, a lot of other NFL stuff, too. Where Legereus Sneed is heading after his uh, great Super Bowl performance. He's no longer a chief. We'll get into that. We'll get into some of the trade deadline stuff uh, for the NFL. It's been moved around. Jim Harbaugh has some high praise for his former quarterback at Michigan, J.J. McCarthy, and uh, more. Many, many more things coming up here on the Daily Blender, but we'll start with the, I think, pretty big and obvious story that I'm sure we're going to get texts for uh, shortly, it, it, if we haven't gotten them already. I forgot to open up the text line. Mm. Uh, there mm. so we, we, mm. we'll take a look at that here in a second but it's the it's the spurs it's the suns yeah they spurs, played suns. a game last night and it yep. did not go well for the suns no it didn't and and i i know what's going to happen and i i can look back on yesterday's uh text line uh keon uh first of all uh i think uh a, a king of uh, let me let me catch up on the text line from yesterday uh, King of Kittens says, uh, uh, hi, uh, go D-backs, miss you guys. Uh, then uh, also Quiet Cannon says, I think if you gave a, a weather report on the Dodgers, uh, it would be uh, a, 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 it, it'd be a large rain cloud uh, just moved over there, uh, and it will be there for their whole season. That's uh, what uh, a Quiet Cannon said. Uh, Big George said uh, that uh, if, if, uh, if the Suns lost yesterday, now, this is as we were signing off. I don't have any uh, 
Uh, I don't have any new texts yet. It, 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 as we were signing, so the Suns are currently tied 39-39 with the uh, Victor Wimbam, uh, yes, uh, Wimb- Wimbiyama, Wimbiyama less, less Antonio twister. Spurs. If the Spurs, uh, if the Suns lose this game uh, without the Spurs having Victor Wembinyama, Frank Vogel should be fired and left on the tarmac in San Antonio. That's what Big George said yesterday. Uh, an overreaction, even by the standards of when he said it. Um, <laughs> that was yesterday. Now I, these are the texts I didn't get to yesterday. So I just so so here are some of the, the texts to start off the show today. By the way, right, we're broadcasting right. live from the Harmon Solar Studios. I don't remember yes, if I remember we to are. say that. Yeah. Uh, here in the, the palatial suites in Scottsdale, Arizona. Uh, and we're also on the text line, 888-368-1580. That's how you join us here on the show. And we already have some of the text rolling in with the Berg um, saying, uh, afternoon, guys, has Big George executed the firing of Frank Vogel yet? And he <laughs> said, oh, Keon kicking off the show. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, doing a little bit of driving today. But look, Big George has the next text, so we'll find out. Berg, uh, as soon as the thinky wheel is done, you know, publishing Big George's uh, novel, War and Peace, we'll, we'll get to it. Okay, here it is. He says, hey, Keon and Randy, happy Tuesday. So have the Suns fired Frank Vogel yet no. after yesterday's disappointing no. performance no. against a Victor wembanyama less Spurs team? So pathetic. And look, it was pathetic. I don't think that there is any way to rescue that performance. <sighs> Uh, against the Spurs. <laughs> I mean, we, we we talked about the Suns, Keon, going. At, they were in sixth place at the time. They lost last night. The Kings won. Uh, the, the, uh, the, uh, the, the Mavericks, the cowardly Mavericks won. And now the Suns are in eighth. A, 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 what, a, a game ahead of the Lakers? Half game? Half, Half game, game? I believe. Half game. Half game above the Lakers in eighth place. I mean, uh, what did we say yesterday on the show? We said yesterday on the show, you said it eloquently, just win. If you can't win against the Spurs, when you need to win, what does that say about your team? When, when Booker goes 35 and, and uh, a, 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 a KD goes uh, at 20 plus, and you can't win against the Webb and Yama less Spurs, what does that say about your team? Nothing good, Randy. Nothing good. I-, I will name the bad things that I thought that I saw yesterday, some of which I think are pretty obvious, and then some of them maybe not. So, one, to add literal injury uh, to-, to the insult that was that loss. Oh, boy. No Beal. He he hurt his wrist near the end of that game, and that, oh and that clearly gosh. changed the way that things happened down the stretch. And, no, and Nurkic. Nurkic is down. Uh, and I think that's actually worse because they, they've figured out how to limp on without Bradley Beal this season. He has missed an awful lot of games. But Nurkic is, I think, massively important to what the Suns are because he's the reliable big. He's the guy that he goes out there, and even if he doesn't score a ton of points, he gets rebounds, he makes some of the little plays. He's got a really great two-man game with Bradley Beal when they're both out on the floor. I think it stinks that they're not going to have Nurkic. And oh, by the way, you've got the Denver Nuggets coming up around the corner. So that's just yes. one thing that I saw that was bad. Mm. The other bad thing that I saw, and I and I think the the one that I find the most frustrating, is this this team just struggles to stay locked in. They they play, and it almost seems to not matter who the players are. It doesn't matter who the coach is. They play up to the level of their opponents. They play down to the level of their opponents. And they didn't done they do it that again. last year. Didn't they, they, do they that did last it last year. year. Yeah. And they're doing it again. With Monty. So this it can't be a Monty thing. This can't be a coach thing. This has got to be a team thing, right? It, a little bit, yeah. And and part of it is it, it, I I don't know if you just hired a guy that has the same weakness, because that would be silly. But I, I do think that when you have players who are ready to go out there and play, I uh, they they need to stay engaged in the game. And they they don't. This is this is not the first time they've lost to the Spurs this season. This is the third time they've lost to the Spurs this season. And I don't panic usually, and I don't get alarmist about a single game. But the trend of you play bad teams and you can't beat them is not great. 
Um, when you look at what the Spurs are, they are a 16 win basketball team. They're so bad. They could legitimately have the number one overall pick again by the time the draft rolls around. <laughs> and yet they beat the Suns three times. Three times. And the, and the Suns are supposed to be one of the quote unquote elite teams in the West. Yeah. And I, I, I have been bullish on them all year long that they are a contender, but not looking like so, that. So not, what are you thinking now? Six, what are you thinking? Now? Six turnovers last night in the first half, then six in the third by itself. That's that's what I see. And it seems like every time they've got some of their habits that they've turned away from and that team finally looks like a contending team, they play a bad team and they go right back to the old habits. They go right back to the turnovers. They go right back to the lazy passes. I mean, they, they were up eight in the in the middle of the third quarter and Devin Booker had a pass that was so careless that it just was taken away uh, by Devin Vassell. And then, you know, they followed it up with a with Kevin Durant got his pocket picked. It just it just snowballed into this massive thing. But you want to see the players be locked in and be dialed in. And they're just not. I, Do you think that uh, uh, Devin Booker's headband is too tight? <laughs> because I think uh, it, notice before this season, Devin Devin Booker did not wear a headband, and this season he's wearing a headband, and now all of a sudden uh, he's got lazy passes. I, you see what I'm saying? Maybe I just I I don't think maybe that's his the case. arms are going numb <laughs> from his headband. You see what I'm saying? It, it's it's possible. Uh, but I, here's here's what I'll say about Devin Booker. I actually thought Devin Booker played really well last night for the most part. Devin Booker. And I think that Frank Vogel I don't. should finally I don't. wave the white flag on this ex- on this yeah. experiment. Yeah, Devin Booker is not a point. He's guard. not the point guard. He's no. not a point guard. And I understand well, that he kind well, of only turned to him after Beal yeah. got hurt. But yeah. still, Devin Booker is not a point guard. I think we've they, seen they, enough. Either Beal needs to get better, or they need to trade Beal, and they need to bring in somebody that can be a point guard for this team. And let me tell you right now. With a half-game lead over the Lakers right now, the Lakers are going to overtake the Phoenix Suns. Lakers are hot, and the Suns are not. We also talked about on this show, um, the, the Suns, before the trade deadline, I kind of wanted to see them go after a big guy. They had Bol Bol, but, you know, I, I just didn't. Where know. was he last night? Didn't play. That's, that is the biggest mystery. I they went small because the idea was they wanted to run and they did, they did that after they lost Beal and uh, Nurkic. So you, you, you you put Royce O'Neal in, but then you go drew Eubanks instead of Bol 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 Bol's played well in the minutes that he's had. And I just don't like drew Eubanks I, I, game I, very much. I, I, just I, I'm not just getting it done. I'm confused. I I'm confused. You, you beat a team. Uh, by 20 points, uh, you know, uh, two nights ago. And then last night, you give it away by two points. And and, and I, I, I don't understand why you wouldn't come out with the same lineup, why you wouldn't come out with the same kind of thought, why you wouldn't make this team beat you uh, at the at the way that you, you dominated them just two nights before. Remember, it was a 20-point victory two nights before. 20-plus. And then you lose by two points last night. Why do you change the lineup? I, I mean, that's my big question. I, I, I don't know. And this is the <laughs> this is the Frank Vogel downside here. These rotations don't make any sense. And then you ask him or <sighs> I didn't ask him personally. People in the media ask him and the answers are ridiculous. <laughs> They're outrageous. You know, like Bull Bull had such a good game <laughs> in the first game they played Thank you. on Thank Saturday. You. Why yeah. on earth? It's not just that he, you know, he he didn't play him. He didn't play him in in the in this de- in deciding to play a small yes. lineup. The yes. Spurs don't have Wemby. The small lineup actually plays to what San Antonio would have preferred. <laughs> Why didn't you go out there? And, and and change things up to where the Spurs would be more uncomfortable. Bull Bull, whether you like all of his defense or not, and there there is a lot to be desired there at times. Bull Bull makes the Spurs uncomfortable. 
Now, I'm not a basketball coach. I've never coached at any level, uh, high or low. But I think that if the other team doesn't want me to do something, I should probably do that. Pierre on the uh, uh, Pierre on the text line says, "Hello, Mr. Rose and Mr. Randy. Perhaps I should read it like this. Hey, hello, Mr. Rose and Mr. Randy. I'm sorry to hear that your Phoenix Suns are struggling against the San Antonio Spurs. It was a tough loss for my Raptors yesterday against the Nets. I think the Raptors uh, won't make the playoffs this year." At least I have my Toronto Blue Jays. <laughs> well, I mean, Pierre, I mean, talking about how the Suns lost last night. Yeah, I mean, good. I mean, I mean thanks and, for dropping and, and, in, Pierre. But And, and Pierre, uh, your guy, uh, uh, Webb, Webb and Yama, uh, clearly is going to be one of the dominant players. I mean, in the NBA, he should be. I, uh, the way he's been... Uh, uh, working his game, his craft this year, and learning. Uh, Victor Webb and Yama from France. I mean, this this text right here from Donnie is is proof of why Donnie is a high level. Yeah, thank you. Right, Donnie said six months ago, Vogel was the was the best. Popovich and the Spurs were winning multiple rings thanks to Matt Ishbia's leadership. I I'm pretty sure he missed a missed a punctuation in there somewhere. Mm. Uh, mi- mi- uh, winning multiple rings thanks to Matt Ishbia's leadership. My, my, how things have turned. And the reason why uh, Donnie can make people mad with stuff like that is that nobody said that. Nobody said yeah. that, Don. I, I don't know what to tell you. Um, I'm glad that you're enjoying the alternate dimension version of the Daily Blender <sighs> where presumably Bizarro me, Randy, and Jeffrey might have said that. But we didn't say that. So I don't know, to, yeah. I, I don't know what to, to do with some of the things I don't you're, know, Donnie, you're dropping I mean, there. I mean, good luck, Donnie. Uh, but uh big george says thanks keon i'm so glad to hear you say that about the suns you're the voice of reason in a sea of hellfire thank goodness the suns won't be (laughs) facing the spurs in the playoffs which (laughs) yeah i guess we can be glad about that because in a seven game series this thing would be three to one so yeah maybe we should be glad that they're not facing the spurs in in the postseason but look i i think that the the, the suns have things that they can fix Mm. and still contend but do they though? But until do I they have, see it, do they though? Keon have things they can fix. They do. Do the Suns have things they can fix under the current leadership uh, of this of this uh, team, Frank Vogel? Because I haven't seen I, it this year. There has been many opportunities for Frank Vogel to make some moves, I, and guess what? Hasn't happened. I I look. I think Vogel makes a lot of mistakes. I think that again, his rotations are confusing. But I don't think that Vogel is the reason why they're turning over the ball yeah. at a rate of 14 and a half times a game. I'm sorry. The yeah. player in, 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 in the three big sports in, in America, football, basketball, and baseball, basketball is the one where, at least to me, the players matter more than the coach does. If, you, if you're turning the ball over, I mean, you're, thro- you're the one passing it. You're the one then, not protecting it. If you're being then, careless... And I understand the coach can come in and say some things, but I, 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 you I, have a it, it, Devin but, Booker's not new, Durant's but, not new. Yeah, but 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 uh, Steve uh, Steve Kerr with uh, you know uh, with Golden State, Steve Kerr. I mean, what are you going to say about that? He was able to control that team and all the egos on that team, and he was able to get that team to play together, and he was able to make moves when he needed to. To get that team to play better, it but four championships. Now, uh, it, Matt Ishbia comes in here, brings in uh, uh, Kevin Durant. We all applauded that, and, and, and then he brought in Bradley Beal. And and you know, quite honestly, I think this experiment failed. Quite honestly, at, at this point in the season, we're in March, we're late March, heading into April, uh, almost time for uh, playoffs and then finals. And I and I I think I can safely say this experiment has failed. I mean, I I personally, I, I you know me, I'm just a very much wait and see kind I know, of guy. I, I know, I, I know, I will, I will, uh, I I can say it failed when I see it fail. But at the same time, I I don't know that this is the same situation that Frank Vogel is in, that Steve Kerr was in, 
you know, Steve Kerr had a, a group of guys that he was able to coach from when they were a young core of guys to when they yeah. were older. Yeah, and, I'll give and, you that. And and yeah. of course, Steph Curry is potentially the greatest shooter in the history of the game. And, I'll, I'll give and, you that. And, and, and all of that. So I, 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 and I understand what you're saying. I'm not I'm not saying you're wrong. Even. I just think that. When you look at what the Suns are doing, I thought one of the advantages of having this many veteran guys with this talent level on the team was that you could at least fix things out on the floor. The coach can't give you every play. This isn't, this isn't football. There isn't a headset and, a, and somebody's getting the play every single possession. The players need to be able to figure things out on the fly, you know, run the sets that are, that are being run. I don't think that what the Suns are running is bad, but if you're going to pass the basketball, have yeah. some f- conviction, yeah. pass I the mean, ball, don't that, one-handed. Well, but isn't that. that coaching though? Isn't that coaching though? I, I mean, isn't there somewhere where somebody has got to be the leader? Somebody's got to be the adult here. I Look, mean, if I you're going to pass the ball, like, pass it with conviction. You know, get the ball over to the other guy. I, and We've got to have a different mindset. And 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 maybe that's what it is. It, maybe Frank, Frank Vogel is still too much of a player's coach uh, to, to be that person. But I don't, I'm concerned that someone has to say that Devin Booker has been in the league too long to pass yeah. the ball the way he's passed it. I mean, I, or, I get it, but like, these guys can't coach themselves. That's why they have coaches and they pay them very well. Player, but players play man. And, and I just, think well, I, I know that, that but they need coaches. They need guys to I'm help not, them. I, I think they do. I'm not, I'm not saying you're wrong. What I am saying though, is when I see lack of effort, I blame the players. Try harder. Yeah. Play harder. You're playing the Spurs. Uh, you know what your schedule looks like the rest of the way. It's the toughest schedule know. in basketball right it now. Is. It they is. They don't have any sub-500 teams left on the schedule. They had to win the four sub-500 games in a row that they had. Yeah, we needed We needed, dropped it. We needed last night. We needed last night. We needed tomorrow night. So. We'll have to wait and see. So we, we'll get to all the texts coming on the text line because, man, it, it is blowing up about the Suns here. Yeah. And look, it's, it's, a, it's, it's a team that's uh, pretty, pretty controversial in a lot of ways uh, because the, the potential clearly is there, and that's the frustrating part. So we'll get back to that and a whole lot more here on the Daily Blender on 1580 The Fanatic. This is Brent Musburger's action update on 1580 and 99.3 The Fanatic. Get insights into the sports betting market with VSIN's betting splits. See where the money is and keep updated on how the market is reacting only at VSIN.com. Now, here are the latest lines from my guys in the desert. NBA tonight, the Dallas Mavericks are in Sacramento to take on the Kings. Sacramento, a one-point home favorite, minus 112 on the money line. Dallas, minus 104, with an over-under of 233.5. New Orleans home to take on the Oklahoma City Thunder. Pelicans favored by one point at home, minus 108. Well, the Thunder are also minus 108 on the money line, over-under 223.5. The L.A. Lakers are in Milwaukee to take on the Bucks. Milwaukee, a nine-and-a-half point favorite. Los Angeles, plus a 330 on the money line. Milwaukee, minus 420. The over-under at 232-and-a-half. I'm Tony Dazeri with your VEASAN action update on 1580 and 99.3, The Fanatic. Hi, I'm Henry Winkler. My eyes are very important to me. My eyes connect me with everything I love. I loved my late father-in-law dearly. He always lit up a room, but his vision dimmed with age. He had age-related macular degeneration, or AMD. And since partnering with Apellus, I've learned there's an advanced form of dry AMD called geographic atrophy, or GA. His struggle with vision loss made me want to help others know about GA's warning signs. For some, colors appear dull or washed out. For others, hazy or blurred vision make it hard to see details, like fine print on price tags. Many have trouble seeing in the dark, making driving at night difficult. GA gets worse over time and cannot be reversed. If you think you have GA, don't wait. Treatments are available. Ask a retina specialist about FDA-approved treatments for GA and go to gawon'twait.com. It's March Madness and the fairy tale. You can feel the madness. Oh my goodness. Three pointer. Good in the buzzer. 
Mark's Madness on 1580 and 99.3 The Fanatic. It's presented by Marvin Solar, Kasai Japanese Steakhouse, Bet US, and Platinum Plus Cabaret. Catch all the excitement of the men's NCAA college basketball tournament on 1580 and 99.3 The Fanatic. Imagine your team always looking and feeling their best in high-performance technical workwear. Cintas can make it happen. They have garments for almost every job imaginable. And with the Cintas Workwear Program, you get freshly laundered garments delivered every week for everyone on your team. Great garments without the bother of laundry. That's a real perk for employees. Find out how Cintas can boost team image and morale. Visit Cintas.com. Oh, I'm ready! And get ready for the workday. Hey, Ralph, got another solar question for you. Okay, but did you check out the Harmon Solar Podcast first? The what? The Harmon Solar Podcast. We put new episodes up twice a month that teach you all the things you ever wanted to learn about solar. We discuss things like how solar works, the roofing, sales process, demand management, everything solar. Show like this needs some real smart thinkers, huh? Well, yeah. So you got some really great guests then, huh? Almost every show. Is it on Spotify? Yep. iTunes? Yep. Just search it everywhere. It's the Harmon Solar Podcast. Go check it out at harmonsolar.com. What's up, everybody? Nick Costos here, host of You Better You Bet, reminding you to check out the show. Now, why should you check out You Better You Bet? Because we bring you the most fun. We bring you the most insightful, the most entertaining show in the wagertainment world. From up-to-the-minute breakdowns of backdoor covers, bad beats, and the cheers and tears that come alongside them. Plus, you'll get the best betting analysis anywhere from myself, Ken Barkley, and some of the best minds in the sports wagering world. So tune in weekdays, noon to 3, on Arizona Sports Betting Station, 1580 and 99.3, The Fanatic. Welcome back to the Daily Blender, 1580 The Fanatic, and we are starting the show talking Suns on a Tuesday afternoon, and kind of loudly, maybe some rants were involved. And the text line is weighing in on everything we just talked about. So let's maybe, maybe go. rants, maybe, maybe rants. But look, I maybe. can't. Uh, yeah, I can't, mean, I can't promise that those will ever be out of a out of a show. I'm involved I mean, in. I'm, for me, though, it's still the thing for the it, 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 before you go ahead, Keon. I just have to say, Suns doubled the turnovers that the uh, the Spurs had, and and I don't know when it's going to sink in for this team. 14 turnovers against seven is not going to get the job done. 14 against seven. And the Spurs had 10 steals uh, against the Suns. 10 steals. And some of those were those lazy passes we were talking about. And the about. Suns gave up 14 turnovers. I'd love to know how many points off turnovers you, I mean, this uh, Spurs team got. Because to me, the, the Suns team gave this away. I mean, if you watch the game last night, the Suns shot the field goal percentage uh, they needed to. They they shot the uh, they shot the three point percentage they needed to. They they uh, they uh, did what they needed to do to win this game, and yet the Spurs won. And I I just I I. When does this sink in to this team, uh, the Phoenix? These are veterans. These are not kids. Like you said, this is not the Houston Rockets. This is not Oklahoma City. We're, we're talking about Kevin Durant, Devin Booker, yeah, Beal. Uh, uh, these guys that have been in the league for a while. And they're giving games away by turning the ball over. And, and turning it over to some of these kids we're talking about. Devin Vassell's young. Jeremy Sohan was his second or third year in the league. Trey Jones, like the young guys, talented guys. I, I think the Spurs have a very, you know, solid young nucleus of players moving forward. But they're a young team that won 16 games this year. <laughs> and three of those those wins came against your Phoenix Suns. And that sucks. And, and you look at this team and you think, good God. I mean, this team is. You look at this Phoenix Suns team and you think, you know, man, I, where is the wisdom? Where is the leadership? Where is the, you know, the experience on this team? And because it's, it's not just uh, the kids on this team giving the ball up. It's Devin Booker. It's, it's Kevin Durant. 
Kevin Durant gives this ball up, I mean, yeah, look, look, here's exponentially. The two leaders of the team in turnovers were Devin Booker and Kevin Durant. At I'm just, I'm just three, saying. Three turnovers, Durant, five for Booker, which is. I mean, Devin ah. should be. Devin should be way ahead of this. And, and, and KD, come on. And, and a couple of those turnovers, you're just like, there's no excuse for them. Like, that, that's the part that, like, I, I don't know. And this is the reason why, like, yeah, you could say the guys need coaching and Frank Vogel needs to step in. But, like, Devin Booker knows better. We've seen him play his whole career here. So we know that he can just, play better it's, it's than that. Sloppy, sloppy, sloppy. And I, I think Kevin Durant knows it. I think he's disgusted with it. I think uh, Devin Booker's disgusted with it. I, I think they don't know how to get around it. And I think, uh, quite honestly, Keon, I think it comes down to coaching. I, I'll be honest with you. I think it comes down to a scheme. And I, I, I think it comes down to – because you, you were, we're talking about a team here. And, uh, you know, Devin and, and KD – they're all part of a team, but so is the coaching staff. I mean, I, mean I, I get that. I just like coaching. I think coaching really matters in the NBA when the margins are thin. So when you're playing a team well, to me, that's, that's on a really, they're comparable to you. The, the difference is going to be the coach. The, the coaching it's, it's, matters a ton in the playoffs. Seems but like you it. just beat this team by 20 oh, points I, two I, days I, ago. I, no, that's so, what I'm saying. So you're the players are capable of going out there and running what the coach put out there two days ago, and they beat yeah. him by 20. Yeah. The players go out there again, and th- there was a point there in the well, third it's not quarter the same where players. They're, they're, not the same players. Not the same players. I mean, look I mean, at look at the Suns. Look the, at the Suns with the you know with Nurkic and uh, uh, Beal out, but that was third quarter Nurkic, fourth quarter Beal. Like there was still enough of that game that, that they're involved in this too. They're not getting Kevin off scot free just because right, they got so, hurt. So Kevin had 29, uh, Booker had 36, uh, Beal had nine points. Nine. A bull bull had no points. He was in the game for eight minutes. You, you, you talked about it earlier. Drew Eubanks was in there instead of bull bull. Bull bull was in for eight minutes, like I- had two rebounds and no points. The other night, if you go back and look at the other night, Bull Bull was dominant. Bull Bull played for 20 minutes. He had, what, 13 points? And they were all crucial points. He had big defensive plays. He oh, brings well, a lot you know, of energy when he's out there. You know, I, uh, I uh, just looking at this web, and Yama's not going to be in there. I don't have to put Bull Bull in. I'll put Drew ba- Re- Eubanks in, and we should win this game easily. Meanwhile. Yeah, Eubanks is slower. Um, he played for 21 minutes, two points. He fouled four times, so that was part of why they couldn't catch up at the end. Look, I'm not killing Drew Eubanks. I think the guy works real hard. I just don't think that he's my number one option if I have to choose between him and Bull Bull. I just, I don't. I I, I, th- I still think this team needs to distribute the ball around rather than Booker and, and, and Durant and Beal. I mean, Grayson Allen only had six points and he was in the game for 35 minutes. To me, Grayson Allen on this team, the way it is right now, should have uh, double digit points. He should have double digit points. Tell me why I'm wrong. Uh, I don't think you're wrong. <laughs> I I agree. The, when they were playing their best basketball, that was the case. Um, and I, I'm not going to kill Bradley Beal for what, what he had um, because he has taken that back seat and he was out of the game early. But when it comes to uh, just some of the the, the effort plays, I thought Beal was actually given some of those. He chased, he had a chase down block. Uh, then he saved the the ball from going out of bounds and, and got it into Booker. Like the, there were some moments there. And actually it felt like when he went off the floor, the, the energy just really changed. I mean, that might just be my perception of it, but yeah, I just, I, I'm not, I'm not thrilled about the way that they came out. And I'm not saying that this game is an indicator of what this team is. I'm saying their entire season versus the Spurs is an indicator of what this team is. Mm. And I don't like what I'm seeing. I don't know. I don't know. I, 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 I just feel like uh, uh, Grayson Allen needs to be a better part of this game. I mean, I okay, okay I know. I know you got KD and I know you got Book. Uh, but uh, uh, Grayson Allen's got to be double digits for this team to be successful. Hey, look, and Royce O'Neal had 12 points and Grayson Allen had six. The, the fact is, Devin Booker and Kevin Durant, when 
It's weird when Beal's not on the floor. He's the guy that's actually moving the ball. 17 shots, Kevin Durant. 28 shots, Devin Booker. The reason why Grayson Allen had six points is because he only shot it five times. Well, I mean, you know, I mean, it's just like if you're not getting the touches, you there's no rhythm. And then guess what you can't do to Grayson Allen? You can't go late in the game and just give him the ball and expect him to shoot. He hasn't been in a rhythm. He hasn't been shooting. Mm. It, that, that's good. That's going to be a problem. I eh, gross. But let's get to the text line. 888-368-1580 and see what the fourth dimension has to say. Bear Claw says who will be the first team to win a championship? Would it be A, the Suns, B, the Clippers, C, never will win one? Um, I think you mean neither. And I, I don't know how you can know that. <laughs> he says I got C. Uh, he says I got C. And I got to tell you, I've never seen the Clippers in the finals. Have you? I just no. think if you can, if you're capable of getting there, then it makes sense to think that that you might actually have a good shot of winning one before the team that never goes. But maybe that's just me. Uh, Badfish says, well, the upside of your rant, Keon, is opening day is in two days. You're damn right. <laughs> we may be tuning to that a little bit more if the Suns keep looking like this. Uh, you already read Pierre's text. And then Pinocchio says, Frank Vogel is just guessing. Mostly wrong. Time for the pink slip. Beer me, Randy, please. Um, I, I don't know if Vogel is just guessing. I, I mean, I've seen the guy coach, okay? And I'm sorry. I, I have seen him turn in some fantastic coaching performances. Yes, there are stinkers in there, too. I dare you to find the coach where that's not true. Um, but if he can't get through to these guys, you know what I mean? If he can't coach these guys and he can't get through to them, what good is he? For this team, not not very helpful. I'm saying, you know, pink slip if he fails in the playoffs because that's what the team's going to be judged no. on anyway. And there's 10 games left in the season. There's nothing that you're going to do. There's no one you're going to find and hire right now that's going to help you on a playoff run more than the guy that's been coaching the team the whole year. So you got to let the thing ride out. And then if it doesn't work, you can go back to the drawing board. I am not defending Frank Vogel mm. against any and all criticism. So who do but you bring in? I mean, if if Frank Vogel goes away at the end of the season, let's just let's go ahead and go way out here. And the Suns lose in the first round, uh, you know, the play in game. If they make the damn play in game at this point, if they make the play in game, because the Suns have the hardest record uh, heading into the playoffs. The Lakers have the easiest record. So we know the Lakers are going to make it because the Lakers are getting all the calls going to the free throw line way more than anybody else. And it's, it's documented by other uh, NBA coaches. We know that the Suns have the hardest record going in to the playoffs. So when the Suns don't make the damn playoffs, who's going to be the next head coach of the Phoenix Suns? That, that is a great question. And I don't know what the answer is. <laughs> I mean, I would, I would, I would check in on the Clippers again. I would check in because there was a point there, a little bit, where Ty Lue and the Clippers weren't on the same page, and he looked like he was potentially not happy there. I might check in on that again because they're struggling, and you know, is that a guy it, that could come in here and, and and take this team and I, get the attention of this team? Ty Lue is 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 a, is a dude to me. I I don't know. I like I like I what mean, he's to been you, able to do. But... I like what he's done. Uh, you know, when when he was in uh Cleveland with with LeBron and getting those group of guys to play together, that's where he won his title. And then even now with the Clippers, I I don't think that Ty Lue. Uh, I think Ty Lue's been awesome. I, I don't think that he's failed to 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 get the best out of the guys. He's he's in a similar situation, I think, to to Vogel here where. Paul George in and out of the lineup with injury. Um, the uh, Kawhi Leonard healthy for the most part this season, but he's been getting dinged up lately. And and then you've got the Russell Westbrook who's coming back, but we will see what he can add to that. But he, I think he's gotten through to all of those guys. I, I like the way that they play. I, I, right. I like Ty Lue a lot. I, I, it's hard for me to find another name that isn't currently employed. He may Oduka. I, I think he likes where he's at. In Houston, but yeah, I mean, if you could just throw enough money to make that work, but I just don't think that he's leaving. I, I think in Houston, he's got a, a young group of guys that he can impress no, upon them the, on. the way he wants to. You don't think he doesn't want to have a chance at a championship I, after what Boston did? 
I, I, I think that he does, but he e can, may he, Oduka. He's he's the guy in Houston right now. He can put his yeah, fingerprints all over well, that team and I build mean, it however he wants. I mean, come on, it's Houston. We're talking about the Suns. I get that, but like that's talking about so an young. aggressive owner here. I, I mean, Houston is too, and they've drafted really ah, well. They've ah, drafted well, man. They, they they've got uh, <laughs> what's his name, uh, uh, Shirley Lots. What's his name? Uh, uh, Thinks he's a, a villain, but he's not. Uh, what, what, what's oh, his yeah. name? Uh, uh, Dylan Brooks. Look, yeah, look, you think Ime Oduka wouldn't want to come coach Kevin Durant, Devin Booker? I, I think if he was Are you free, kidding me? If he was available, I think he'd do it in a heartbeat. But when you've got mm. a, a young team and that's they're under your purview and you can you can mold that team however you want and and <sighs> And do it the, the long term way because the, then the, why do the you problem have with that, the Suns. Why job, do you have that guy on? How, why why do you have that uh, fake villain on there? Well, because they 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 I mean, needed they needed a defensive specialist. They and, I, and honestly, I wish I wish the Suns had that fake villain because you know what that e fake villain does? It gives Oduka. you an edge. It gives you an edge. He e Oduka comes to Phoenix. I think. I mean. I, I mean, what are they going to do? They they got to bring in somebody that's going to yeah, make a splash. They do, and Matt Ishby is going to throw the money. It's the, the question is, who do you hire? <laughs> no, <laughs> you you you've got to go out and get somebody who knows what the hell they're doing when it comes from to the, managing egos. I mean, no, nobody. Eme, come on, he can do it. I'm not. I just don't think he's leaving Houston. I don't think he's leaving. I think he's got a young team. Because it's not just Dylan Brooks on the team. Jalen Green is a young point guard. He's what about that cat from uh, hey, what's his name from Oklahoma City? What, what, the cat from Oklahoma City. What's his name? Ah, uh, um, can't. Why can't I think of his head. name? <laughs> the cat from Oklahoma. Look what he's doing with Oklahoma City right now. Oh, Mike uh, Mike Dinault. There um, you go. He's he's awesome. But again, look at how they built that team. The problem with convincing people to come coach the Suns, I think, is that you're uh, you're you're getting people to come coach a team that the future isn't that uh is it isn't isn't that clear because you did go for the short term. Well you've got you've you got a window. You yeah. have a window right now. Yeah. And and I think the guys that are on teams with young talent, their windows open longer. You're the Thunder. Uh, it's an a, a, it you're gonna make the playoffs for the first time in a long time and it's an open more open window. Yeah, and I bring think that Bring that cat in from Oklahoma City. You bring in uh, Ime Oduka, and and we right. win a jam uh, we win a championship. I, Oduka is one of those hard nosed, uh, do it my way or get out kind of coaches, and I like that. And he's also a sharp X's and O's cat, which I which I like. But I I still I, think I mean I I think if he wants to win a championship, and he wants to look, I mean Boston is a team to beat for me in the East. I know they lost last night. But look, Boston is the team. Ime Oduka comes into Phoenix and beats Boston in the finals. Come on, tell I, me he's not satisfied. I'm telling you, he he probably is satisfied, but he's not leaving that situation he's in. That's a young, moldable team. That's every coach's dream. All right, know. we can keep going back and forth on this, but I promise, I swear, this time I will actually stay focused and get All through right. the, the text All on right. the text line when right. we come back. You're listening to the Daily Blender here on 1580 The Fanatic. Jeffrey O'Brien here, and congratulations. You just made it through the hottest summer in Arizona history. No lie. The only proof you need is in that electric bill. If you don't have solar, whew, I wonder how bad it's going to get next year. You need to call Harmon Solar today. Harmon Solar could save you over 80% off your electric bills. They're a locally owned, family owned company. Call Harmon Solar for a free estimate. 800 281 3189. That's 800 281 3189, or go to harmonsolar.com. My brother-in-law died suddenly, and now my sister and her kids have to sell their home. That's why I told my husband we could not put off getting life insurance any longer. An agent offered us a 10-year, $500,000 policy for nearly $50 a month. Then we called SelectQuote. SelectQuote found us identical coverage for only $19 a month, a savings of $369 a year. Whether you need a $500,000 policy or a $5 million policy, Select Quote could save you more than 50% on term life insurance. For your free quote, call Select Quote at 1 800 452 5050. 
That's 1-800-452-5050. Or go to selectquote.com. 1-800-452-5050. That's 1-800-452-5050. Selectquote. We shop, you save. Details on example rate at selectquote.com. This is a special alert to all Americans who own a vehicle with less than 200,000 miles, with an auto warranty about to expire or with no warranty coverage at all. Due to a decline in the economy, CarShield is announcing a low-cost, month-to-month vehicle protection plan that is now available to the public to save any driver out-of-pocket expenses on future auto repairs. Call now to find out how you can pay almost nothing for covered auto repairs. Yes, you heard that correctly. Pay almost nothing for covered auto repairs. An open phone line has been established for all drivers to call for a free quick quote. Call 800-736-6158 now. Drivers who are covered will not have to pay for covered repairs again. This protection plan is at an all-time low. Additionally, drivers who activate this vehicle protection today will also receive free roadside assistance, free towing, and car rental options at no additional cost. Call us for your free quick quote today. 800-736-6158. That's 800-736-6158. What do you have to lose? Call 800-736-6158. Again, 800-736-6158. At Bet365, we don't do ordinary. We believe that every sport should be epic. Every goal, every game, every point, every play. From the moments that are legendary to the ones that fly under the radar. Whether it's a game-winning goal in the final seconds of overtime or a shot on goal in the first period, whatever the sport, whatever the moment, it's never ordinary at Bet365. 21 plus only. Must be physically located in Arizona. If you or someone you know has a gambling problem and wants help, call 1-800-NEXT-STEP or text Next Step to 53342. Your home for sports. 1580 and 99.3 The Fanatic. Welcome back to the Daily Blender here on 1580 The Fanatic. We're chugging along and we'll get to your texts here and clean up the text line before we move forward and talk about... uh, I don't know, some other team's unfortunate night of basketball. Uh, and we're going to start with Brunswick guy. And I need Brunswick guy to step off. <laughs> what What did what Brun- did Brunswick guy say? Brunswick guy says, hmm, ah. sounds like the Suns could use an infusion of youth. Maybe move up to, to pick Alexander Saar in the draft. Now, <sighs> now he, Brunswick guy, I'm a Wizards fan. It's come up a couple of times on the show. My team couple is a couple of times, yeah. The actual worst team in basketball. Alexander Saar is probably going to be the number one overall pick. So with that said, screw you. Alexander Saar is my guy. Go find somebody else. You need a center, you need an infusion of youth. Draft anybody else. Alexander Saar is my guy. Step so, up. So so let me ask you this. Be, be, before you move on, I'm sorry. I have to ask you. Mm-hmm. And I know if Jeffrey was here, he would ask you the same thing. Mikhail Bridges. Was it too much for us to get t- KD and, and trade away our, our, our youngsters, uh, Mikhail Bridges and uh, a, a uh, what's his name? Um, not Chance. Uh, that was Cam. Cam, Cam, uh, I, I forget it, it, which it, Cam Kale and Cam, it, it, yeah. Kale and Cam. We <laughs> the, gave away the twins, the twins basically. <laughs> and, and and last night we saw that uh, Mikael Bridges, uh, he, he was effective for the uh, for the Nets, but he's not been anything. But what if he's with the Suns? Well, you don't and, have Durant. Well, then we. What if we make a different trade? We get Durant and we keep Mikael Bridges. Well, if if that had happened, and I don't I don't know necessarily how because I remember reading at the time that James Jones didn't want to give up Bridges for Durant. Yes. And then when Ishbia bought the team, Ishbia was like, "We're getting Durant," and the, we, I don't care what it yeah, takes. Yeah, we're we're doing that. So say Ishbia doesn't say that, maybe mm-hmm. he lets James Jones maneuver it however he wants to, and then the Suns are able to acquire Kevin Durant with no Mikhail Bridges. Are they better off? I mean, I think, I think undoubtedly better off. I just don't know how you make that trade happen without Bridges. That's what the Nets I mean, wanted. <laughs> couldn't we have come up with a with a different package, though? I mean, 
you know, uh, send Cam maybe. and not Mikhail, uh, Mikhail Bridges because he seems to be an everyday player for the uh, uh, New Jersey Nets. If I'm, uh, tell me if I'm wrong, but I I think I'm right. I mean, I think the guy's an everyday contributor uh, for the uh, uh, for the uh, uh, New Jersey uh, uh, or Brooklyn Nets. Yeah, I, I think I think Mikhail. Look, Mikhail plays a lot, and they love him over there. <laughs> And, and, and the well, guy, they loved him here. I mean, they, they loved him here, too. But I'm saying he's 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 not just a con- contributor. He he is a really, really damn good team player. guy. I, yeah. yeah. And, I, and I and I and yeah, he he would make the team better. He would give you that 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 defensive guy that also shoots. I think he's a more consistent shooter than Royce O'Neal, who's kind of playing the role he had here as at least a defensive guy you know maybe we could have worked a three-team trade or something you know yeah i mean look i don't i i don't know what all the options were that were available so i can't say either way but if they had been able to do it so it's unfair to speculate yeah just is what i hear because i don't know exactly what was on the table and what wasn't and all right it didn't seem like at the time the nets were going to pull pull the trigger without mikhail bridges involved in the deal okay um so I, okay, I I understand that, but like, there's a little bit of a retooling that has. So to happen we need afterwards. a guy, or we, we need a guy like a Mikhail Bridges, in my opinion, uh, to come and kind of infuse some youth into this uh, into this lineup. Yeah, youth, and and also just have players who 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 kind of get it from an intensity standpoint. They don't need to be told what to do. Don't need to be told how to do it. You, you know guys that you don't have to tell to get your ass in gear. Like those are players that are incredibly valuable. That's that's why I wanted the Suns to go after PJ Tucker a little harder Mm. before the trade deadline. Cause I thought Tucker's big for starters. So we wouldn't be looking at Drew Eubanks. Yeah, (laughs) but he didn't, he didn't, when PJ was here the last time, he didn't like to be here. And and maybe that's probably the part. part of it. But the the but co- the coach is different. That the was under different. different. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. I just I thought maybe you know maybe you could get it to yeah. work. He's already not happy with the Clippers though. So you know they you might have been able to get him for not too much because mm. <laughs> malcontent in the locker room teams usually try to 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 move on from that guy. But in, in this particular case, that that didn't happen, and maybe the Suns did look into it and, and just weren't able to get it done. But regardless of what it is, uh, they they're to me they they're missing that edge and. You know, I, I, it, I it, feel like they're missing that. It's not an edge. I feel like they're missing. And, and I understand what you're saying, Keon. I feel like they're missing that youth infusion. And, and that, that could be a factor as well. Um, I just, I, they're missing that uh, sort of uh, youngster they, being around the youth energy the youth makes your window open longer too. But like, I, I just think that when it comes to the Suns, the, the fact is, I, they're they're they get they get derailed easily i think that's the 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 best way of saying it like one of the things that keeps the warriors in line is you never have to tell draymond green get it in gear he's always he's just always there and he's so intense that if anybody else on the floor isn't playing with that level of intensity he he calls them out you know and and he makes that something that steve kerr doesn't have to do that's that's the guys are now handling that themselves. That's, that's what you want but, as a coach. I mean, as a first year coach with the Suns, Matt Ishbia doesn't have that. I feel like maybe I, I'm yeah, wrong. They, yeah, no, that that person is not out there on the floor, and they never went to go get him. And that is the part that, like, you know, you were talking about Dylan Brooks being a fake bad guy, and he is, but he also is somebody who is chippy. He's just the 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 switch to you know be aggressive defensively and offensively it's on it's on all the time you don't have to tell him he just is that way sometimes I, I, too much but i, I think he like needs that guy i, I feel like a, a, a mikhail uh, bridges would be somebody that would uh, be chippy in practice a guy that would be challenging these old timers uh, he's a defensive guy you know he, he would be he would be <laughs> kind of you know what i mean he would make these guys step up it, it seems like to me he would be challenging i don't think uh, d uh, d book and i don't think uh, uh, I I don't think KD have anybody challenging them. I think these guys are walking around as kings of the court, and they don't have anybody challenging. Them. Where, you know, you might see a younger team that has somebody younger on there, uh, like you said, a Dylan Brooks, somebody that's going to be, you know, kind of chippy to him, somebody that's going to call him out. 
somebody yeah. that's going to get in their face uh, it, competitively and and say, look, you need to do this better. You need to be better. You're better than this. And I, I don't feel like the Suns have that. I I agree. I, I agree. So uh, and I don't think the coaching staff does that. I think uh, I, I you know, I think you Phil and the Lakers. Uh, it was a different thing. I mean, Phil and the Lakers. I mean, when you look at Phil and the Bulls and Phil and the Lakers, come on. But that he yeah. challenged that team. And that's why he's a Hall of Famer and he's got all the rings that he's got. It, it it's because he he had massive egos and he knew how to manage them. And I think that that but he called his, them out. He did. Um, but he did it in different ways. He knew how to get Kobe going. And it was different. You don't call Shaq out the same way you call out Kobe because their their mentalities are just different. Well, yeah, well sure. And, and so but he, but he did. I, I, I think that 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 takes a certain level of skill. I don't know that it's necessarily fair to compare Vogel to Phil Jackson. You know, well, I don't <laughs> think that I, but what I'm trying to get to is yeah. I don't think Vogel is the same guy uh, that can uh, deal with these big egos like Phil Jackson. I think Phil Jackson had a way of dealing with these guys. I, I, I think that, uh, you know, he had a way of calling these guys out in their own way and challenging them in their own way to make them step up. And I don't think that, uh, I don't think Frank Vogel can do that with this Suns team, at least not right now. As, as currently constructed. Because you can do that. You can hire a coach. And I'll just say this thing before we jump to the text line here because I got to clean up. There's so mm-hmm. many of them. Mm-hmm. Um, but like, I think there's a way to go, okay, these are my coach's strengths and weaknesses. These are the kinds of players that I have to have to kind of offset some of the stuff my coach doesn't do. Because coaches mm-hmm. are people. <laughs> and they have, they have weaknesses well, too. Well, I mean, and so keep like, in mind. They had they had players on the on the Lakers like Kurt Rambis. I mean, Kurt Rambis was not going to put up with any crap from any of these quote yeah. unquote veterans. And, and even Kobe and Jordan, you like you didn't need to tell Jordan no to be dialed in. He would have never lost a game like you that, didn't. Right? You don't need to tell KD to be dialed in. I don't think you need yeah. to tell KD or I, a, 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 a a book to be uh, dialed in. I, but, but I think you need a coach that's going to challenge them. Or, or somebody in that locker room, if not a coach. So I, I agree with that. Absolutely. All right. So let's get to the Berg here on the text line. He says, hi, Pierre. The Blue Jays may be in the thick of the AL East. Good take. Who else thinks the Blue Jays make the AL playoffs? Me. I, I think so, too. Like, yeah, they, they're, they're damn good. The fifth letter says Frank Vogel is not it. Believe me. Only reason my Lakers won a ring in 2020 is due to great three-point shooting in the bubble and no fans in the stands. Plain and simple, Vogel always looks lost. And I disagree with that. I don't think he looked lost in L.A. The great three-point shooting, i he doesn't get credit for it until you know the sh- three-point shooting was gone. Then he got blamed for all of it. Uh, I thought that in Orlando, he, he did the best he could. That was a horrible team. Go back and look at that roster. Nobody was winning with that roster. And I thought in Indiana, he had some great series. He just kept running into LeBron every year. And LeBron went to the finals for 10 years in a row. So I, I, the, when people tell me Frank Vogel is bad, and, and fifth letter, maybe you can be the first person to tell me, what does he do badly specifically? Don't just tell me he's bad. I keep hearing he's bad. What does he not do that you think he should do? Like maybe when he was with your Lakers, what drove you crazy? Or what what makes you happy or sad with the Suns here? I'm going to try and get through a couple more of these texts. Uh, Billy Ray from Avondale says the Suns were a much better fourth quarter team with Monty as the coach. Now they have the audacity to send out the invoice for the upcoming playoff tickets today, which of course is increasing. We have to qualify for the playoffs first. Yeah, probably not a great thing to see when your team's struggling. A little bit of a, oh, we're charging you for the postseason. Oh, really? Uh, Big George says my greatest fear, which can still happen, is the Lakers pass the Suns in the standings and we end up facing the Lakers in the playing round and get beaten by the Lakers. Ralph would never let us live it down. I hope that doesn't happen, but the Lakers yeah. are starting to win again. Yeah. So, yeah, no, that's that's absolutely true. There are still so many more texts, I swear. I promise. We're going to catch up. This thing's getting cleaned up. Mr. Wilbur, Silver Pops, Taco Kenny, we're getting to you. I promise. And then we will get back to the Daily Blenders. Planned here on 1580, The Fanatic.
I spray and scrub, but the soap scum in my bathtub is still there. I spray and scrub, but the burnt sauce on my stovetop sticks around. Sprays can leave grime behind, but new Mr. Clean Ultra Foamy Magic Eraser combines the scrubbing power of an eraser with the cleaning power of Dawn to melt away tough messes on contact. Just wet, squeeze, and erase. Stop spraying, start erasing, and clean with more magic than ever with new Ultra Foamy Magic Eraser. Mr. Clean, Mr. Clean. It's time, basketball bettors. It's March Mania. Jeffrey O'Brien here to tell you about BetUS.com. I endorse one sportsbook and casino, and that's BetUS.com. They've been driving to the basket for over 30 years. This year, BetUS has an epic three-pointer, a 125% sign-up bonus on your first three deposits, plus 10% gambler's insurance. It's amazing. Get started by visiting BetUS.com or give them a call at 1-800-MIND-BETUS. BetUS, where the game begins. Need a boost in capital or a flexible line of credit for your growing business? Hi, I'm Dylan Cohen at JR Capital. I can help you get the money you need fast. The process is a breeze with a simple application and same-day approvals. No more waiting, no more hassle. Just a straightforward path to securing the funds you need faster and easier than asking your banker. So call me, Dylan Cohen, at 602-834-7353. That's 602-834-7353. Or visit moneyradio.com and click on Finance with Dylan. You know, it seems like everybody's talking about the traffic on Valley Roads these days. You know what else everybody's talking about? The absolute best restaurant to take your family and friends to. Kasai Japanese Steakhouse. Now with two Valley locations. No one does it better than Kasai, where talented teppan chefs create the food, the fire, and the fun of teppanyaki. Kasai Japanese Steakhouse is dinnertainment at its best, where a delicious seven-course meal is prepared right at your table with flair. It is a perfect choice for any occasion. Choose from over 50 different items and combinations of teppanyaki. Looking for great dining without the show? Kasai offers an awesome selection on Asian inspired dishes and tasty sushi happy hour deals daily from 6 p.m and enjoy outdoor dining on the heated patio so whether you're here for spring training march madness or just to enjoy the arizona sunshine don't just take your guests to dinner you take them to kasai japanese steakhouse with two locations scottsdale and now in peoria at the 101 in northern go to kasai teppan.com that's k-a-s-a-i teppan.com or search kasai on your mobile phone it's March Madness. And the fairy tale ride continues. You can feel the madness. Oh, my goodness. Three pointer. Good at the buzzer. M- 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 March Madness on 1580 and 99.3 The Fanatic is presented by Harmon Solar, Kasai Japanese Steakhouse, Bet US, and Platinum Plus Cabaret. Catch all the excitement of the men's NCAA college basketball tournament on 1580 and 99.3 The Fanatic. KQFN Tempe. Also transmitting on K25CD Phoenix at 99.3 FM. And K24EU Fountain Hills at 95.9 FM. People settle down because it's time. Time for what? So time. When does it start? Right now. Three, two, one. Let's get on with the show. Let's do it. Welcome back to the Daily Blender. 1580 to Fanatic. We are broadcasting live from the Harmon Solar Studios in Scottsdale. And uh, Tuesday oh. afternoon, we are reacting to the suns it's been a long time pretty much the entire first hour of the show we do have a lot of nfl coming up around the corner though the nfl revamping their kickoff play the nfl pa grades have prompted some owners to change how they're moving around the league uh you you've got the trade deadline being pushed back to after week nine so we'll get to those things what jim harbaugh thinks of J.J. McCarthy, and if anybody else should believe him, we'll get to that. Uh, But first, let's wrap up our conversation here with uh, uh, the text line. 888-368-1580 is how you, the fourth dimension, help us drive the show. Um, Just read a text from Big George about about his greatest fear and Ralph and what uh, what Ralph might do. I don't I don't I don't even worry about that. (laughs) <laughs> not not concerned about you don't worry about Ralph, what ralph's doing well, yeah what ralph's gonna think or say about uh, any of that stuff uh, okay because ralph is going to be insufferable regardless like, that's just well i mean that's his he's bit. a lakers fan yeah, yeah. so look the, the, if the lakers don't make the playoffs and the suns get bounced in the first round do you think that's going to stop ralph no, no. so no. no i'm not going to worry about what ralph's going to do ralph should focus on his team mr wilbur says and he does and he does uh when the first pick 
and should I mention their first round pick in eight years, the Phoenix Suns select in the 2032 NBA draft, a fifth grader from Smith Elementary. The kid <laughs> is uh, four foot nine and can dribble the ball. And that's all we need. <laughs> oh, jeez, <laughs> Mr. Wilbur. That might be Mr. Wilbur's meanest tweet. Yeah, It's yeah. subtle. It's subtle, mm. but it hurts. Yeah. Uh, Silver Pop says, bring in the Bucks former coach. Oh, Mike Budenholzer? Look. Yeah. I, I, yeah. I hesitate. Because a lot of the same problems that, that Monty but, had. I mean, if you yeah. look at, at Ime Odoka, and and when the uh, Boston was in that run, and he was challenging the Boston players. Yeah, I mean, see, that's what I that's lit what I'm Jason thinking. Tatum on fire, um, and I and and there are certain guys in the league I think they need that. Like Jason Tatum is somebody that that needs to be coached a little hard and welcomes it. By the way, I'm not saying. And that I, he I I think that uh, I think Devin Booker does. I think KD does. I think they both need to be coached hard. I think they need a guy. Uh, a strong leader, uh, and I'm not. I, I don't know Frank Vogel. I, I maybe he's a strong leader, but it doesn't seem like he's in that. You know, he's in that uh, that huddle when the game's on the line. Look, guys, we need to go out there and squash their ass. You, you see what I'm saying? I don't think he's like that. What? Well, we need to run this play. We need to run that play, and uh, we've got to get this. And uh, it, you need a guy out there that's gonna. We need to go out there and squash their ass. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. I think the Suns need somebody that's going to hold them, call them to task. And we need to go out. Look, this is the Spurs. They are nothing. They're last place. Don't let them beat you. Go out there and squash them. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. That's the kind of leader I, I feel like the Suns need. They need Keon Rose. <laughs> they need Keon Rose in that dugout. They 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 need Keon Rose to go. Look, go out and end this. End him now. Yeah, I, I'll 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 pick a college example because I've gotten to, to to really hear a lot of him this season. But Bryce Drew is a real quiet guy. But when he's mad, <sighs> those guys in that locker room know. They go into the, they go in at halftime and they're no, down no, no, five no. to a team they should uh, be beating by fifteen. And when they come out of that locker room, it's a new, they, it's a new had, team. If if the Suns had Keon Rose last night, uh, I I think the Suns yeah, win. I'm, I'm agreeing with win, you, by the way. I think they I, win tw- at 120 to 104. I think that's the <laughs> final score. Suns win. I I'm agreeing with you, by the way. I I think <clears throat> Bryce Drew was able to get out of his team what he was able to because he did challenge those guys. He did it in I'm his own about, way. I'm talking about Keon but, Rose. I mean, for me, I look. You go in there and you're like, <laughs> KD, look, you're K, you're Kevin effing Durant. You're, you are <laughs> just the man. Okay. Yeah, look. Uh, you're Devin Booker. Okay. Just go out there and squash <laughs> these guys like they're, you know, well done mashed potatoes. And, and let's just, get out of here. I just need to record all the stuff I say when I'm watching them play. That's what I'm talking just, about. It's just me yelling at the TV that's, for essentially 40 minutes. See, that's minutes. what I'm talking about, so, Leon. Uh, let's, let's, let's get back to the text line, but I, I'll, I'll think about it. I'll think about uh, uh, reaching out to the Suns we need, for an we advisory, need Keon Rose. advisory shouting role. We need Keon Rose as our <laughs> instigator. He's our motivator. <laughs> um, you give you a nice, a, a nice uh, a shouting to. Taco mm. Kenny says, Excuses, excuses, excuses for your Phoenix Suns. Now, I think you have to be suffering from Donnie disease, Taco Kenny, in that nobody made excuses today. Not, what what excuses were made? Did we I not all think, agree that that was I a mean, pathetic I, performance? That was just miserable. Yeah. Isn't Suns it? Should have won that game big. Yeah. When we when we said the amount of turnovers was unacceptable. Was that an excuse? No, I don't I don't think it was. You're saying that the team's not particularly tough, that they don't dial in on big games, they don't. Um, that, that they need somebody to, to challenge them, either a yeah. player in that locker room or the coach uh, himself. What this team needs right now is Keon Rose. Uh, what excuses, Taco Kenny? What excuses? They don't have Keon Rose. I'll tell you that damn much right now. <laughs> I, I don't feel like I'm that special. but uh, I mean, you if know. Keon walks in there today <laughs> and he just gets their attention right away, 
You know, he just walks right up and slaps uh, Kevin Durant well, right that, in the face. That, that is never going to happen. And then he says, now listen up. I you see reach. what I'm saying? <laughs> Baker's cocky head says, if you don't think Dylan Brooks affects the game, you don't understand how much your, in- your mentality matters. He gets in dudes' heads. I wish he would he would blow in LeBron's ear a la Stevenson. Well, no, that that matters. I, I think that, that Dylan Brooks... And, and that's the reason why he's done this. I, I, I think that there is a method to the madness with Dylan Brooks in the persona that he's created. Um, that you already are thinking about Dylan Brooks if he's guarding you before the game. You, you are already. What, what nonsense is this guy going to pull? What, what shenanigans are going to happen out here on the court? And he is annoying. He is a pest. But he legitimately can play defense, too. Like His footwork is, is, is really good. Um, he he does try to hold and get away with stuff, but what defensive player does it? So I, I like Dylan Brooks. I I just he he does get uh I think a bad rap, and he brought it on himself with the he built a persona, and sometimes people just don't buy it. <laughs> that's all. Uh, it does it work? Yeah, it's effective for him, but th- that sometimes uh, people don't necessarily uh, buy into the persona and it looks fake and it looks odd when he's in the locker room and he's wearing sunglasses at night and the reporters are asking him questions. That's the stuff with Dylan Brooks that makes him come across as fake. Neho says without Jeffrey and Ralph, is this the kind and respectful edition of the blender? Um, I don't know if we're going to make as many of the same kinds of jokes that Jeffrey and Ralph make, but I, I, I sure hope not. Um, I don't think there is a kind and respectful version of the Daily Blender. I mean, I, I don't know what Neo is trying to say. I, I don't know either. Wait, what, do you, what do you mean by that, Neho? I mean, who's your who's your team, Neho? Uh, Brunswick guy says, sorry about that, Keon. Didn't mean to trigger you with my question. Would you be okay if the Suns moved up to take Donovan Klingon or Kyle Filipowski? Well, yeah, because the Wizards shouldn't be drafting there. Just just not not the best center in well, the draft. I mean, if, if, if I'm the Suns, I don't want Phil, uh, Filipowski. Come on. I think he's a fraud. But <laughs> he's a fraud. I think he's a damn fraud. I want somebody else. <laughs> I, and, and, oh, but, no. but that's just, that's me. I don't want Filipowski. He's a fraud. And there you have it from the mouth of, of Randy White. Kiss the Cook says, check my text. I said the Suns made a big mistake giving away Mikael Bridges. I got to go up one more here. You talking head, Rummies are back. Okay, the top ten in turnovers per game in the league. Two are on the Suns. Oh, you mean two players? Well, yeah, yeah. I mean, you can't have the highest total without having at least one or two of the highest. Okay, uh, uh, turnover a, guys. A, a, who was that? Who? who that was Kiss the Cook. Kiss the Cook. A. First of all, we're not talking heads. OK, A, we'll say it like it is. Uh, B, uh, talking heads uh, will eliminate uh, uh, turnovers on the Suns and they will continue to look at the Suns as contenders. I don't look at the Suns as contenders. I think the Suns are overrated right now. And I think the Suns don't have anybody challenging them. And I think they are a a, a team that uh, like a ghost ship out there in the uh, in the ocean of the NBA just floating around. They have no challenge whatsoever. So if you think I'm sitting here saying that the Suns are contenders and uh, and I'm some sort of talking head by talking them up, you're wrong. And I will say that with all due respect, uh, Kiss the Cook. And I hope someday we can get together and uh, we can share barbecue secrets uh, together, you and I. And there you have it. Um... The moist one says Blue Jays are a lock after they got Otani. Oh wait, that's Dodgers. <laughs> yeah, well, because the because the blue wasn't it reported that the Blue Jays had yeah, him yeah. there for, for a somebody little bit? said he was on a plane to so, Toronto. Oh, oh, the moist one says Brad Stevens is the next coach there. Mm, um, in in Phoenix, yeah. Brad Stevens. Mm-hmm. All right, I I, I still Will think you challenge? if you're if Will you're he? looking for a coach that is a big presence in the locker room challenges guys doesn't let anybody rest on their laurels i don't know if brad stevens necessarily hits that mark but brad stevens is available to coach if he should want to do that again where's so. cotton fit simmons bring cotton back <laughs> we're john mcleod wait they're both dead right i don't know actually <laughs> <laughs> no uh, says 
Hi there, Keon and Randy. I think you guys are right to be upset with Frank Vogel, but remember that this is a uh, this Suns is a Suns team is a veteran team, and they will bring it all together in the playoffs. Well, that that's the optimistic view, and I held if, that view for yeah. uh, many months. If I'm not sure right now, if no, if I, I'm just not sure. Um, no, uh, if they get there. Because they, they have beaten good teams this season. The problem is you keep losing to the Spurs. You lose to the Bucks when they don't have Giannis. You just keep <sighs> losing to people you shouldn't lose to. You know, you lose to the Rockets. You're better than the Rockets. If. So that just. To me, that's the biggest two-letter word in the English language uh, for the Suns this year. If they get there. If. And, and and in that big if are a bunch of little other ifs of like, if they can reduce the turnovers, if they can stay healthy, if, if, if. But I'm gonna, I'm I'm gonna, I'm gonna stick to the to the to the what I think with the Suns is that I think they are capable. I'm just, I'm just seeing them make improvements. It's two steps forward. It's three steps back. Like that's that's terrible. The fifth letter says, Keon, to answer your question, in my opinion, uh, and this was my Vogel question about uh, uh, Vogel earlier. He said to answer your question, in my opinion, he's too soft as a coach. The reason he did well in Orlando and Indiana was because the majority of those rosters were young in age and listened. They were still finding their way in the league. And as to teams, he's coached like the Lakers and Suns that have all stars. I feel he's he's too free with them and does not have the huevos to lead leaders. Put his foot down and tell the uh, these star players to wake up. He lets them walk all over him. I've seen it firsthand in L.A. And and look. That, that guy was your coach for how many years? Four years? Mm. You you would know better than us, quite frankly, because you, you had him first. But um, th- there are players, or, or there are coaches, rather, I think that are, you know, they're players' coaches, and then there are, are guys that are just in, you know, strict kind of authoritarians, and, and there's also that balance it, in between I, both I, of those. I, I, and Vag- Vogel might be too much of a player's coach. I don't be- think this team needs a strict, uh, overbearing, uh, you know, law dog. I, I, don't, I don't think that's what the Suns need. But I think they need somebody that's going to challenge him. I don't think Phil Jackson was an overbearing law dog. I think he brought ideas to the table. And, and I think the, the, the veterans that were on the Bulls, the veterans that were on the Lakers bought into his ideas. I don't think he was this guy that was like, uh, I mean, good God, how many times have we seen documentaries on Phil Jackson teams? You know, he let his leading defensive player uh, leave on some sort of like vacation in the middle of the damn season. And he's, and he's out there on the, you know, he's out there in Las Vegas somewhere and, and, and he had to send his two stars to, to, to go get him to bring him back. You see what I'm saying? I don't think the Suns need an author, authoritarian. I think they need a guy they respect. I think they need a guy that KD and Devin Booker respect. And when you have the top two guys on the team respecting a, 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 a coach or respecting a member of the team, they will always uh, bond over that. I mean, it. to me, that's, I mean, look, I, it, it, it's that way in any way you go. I mean, you get a guy that, that comes in there that's got the, the respect of the team. It, it always works out positively. Doesn't work out negative. And I don't know if Frank Vogel is the guy for this team. That's all I'm saying. We're... I- Three quarters of the way through the uh, the season, yeah, I don't that know that Frank point. Vogel. Well, I, we got ten I'm games left, so yeah, I think I think you I, are you are now fair to make the decision on Frank Vogel. I, I, and I've waited, and you know this, Keon. Yeah. I've waited. You, I you haven't said any conclusions. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but but I, I I just feel like maybe the Suns. This is the wrong guy. Uh, Frank Vogel might be the wrong guy for this Phoenix Suns team. So what do you do? As uh, Matt Ishbia, do you change the team? Or do you change the leadership, or or some know. combination of the two? Yeah, because I because yeah. because I, I do think that there is something to also what you said about the team being a little younger. Uh, fifth letter, I appreciate the answer to that question, man. 
Uh, Ralph has crab says, I like today's show. Very fiery. Reminds me of sports talk in some of those big cities like New York or Chicago. Yeah. Lots of yelling. <laughs> Let me know when you're ready to, to yell about some NHL hockey and my Vancouver Canucks. I'm, I am not the biggest hockey guy. I watch it, but I, I, I just don't understand as much. I don't mm. feel as great putting myself in a position of, uh, you know, yelling on behalf of some team or other, because I, I just, I just feel like I, I'm not, I'm not knowledgeable enough. So I, I can give you some basics. Um, but no, like the, the, the East coast talk radio is what I grew up with, man. Like all, all the, the, the shouting and the fire. I'm, I'm, that's how I learned radio to do with that information. What you will <laughs> Mars bars. Eight Oh five says happy taco Tuesday, fellas. Suns are going down and Lakers are coming up. I'll take an eight Oh five Randy. And sons in four, haha. Ha. I'll, I'll excuse your, uh, your your son's cruelty there, Mars Bars, because um, I like you. That's why Billy Ray from Avondale says, uh, "Well, he's, he had two texts because he's been waiting for so long." The Suns were a much better fourth quarter team with Monty. No, I already read that one. And then he said, "I wouldn't be surprised if all the Suns beat the Nuggets tomorrow." Because they will be refocused after that embarrassing loss. And that would mm. still be very, very ma- upsetting to me. And, and I'll tell you why. Because it'll prove exactly what I'm saying. That this team can mentally disengage from games that they ought to win. Handle your business. This is how you lose in the playoffs. This is how you yeah. get to the playoffs. And you're playing a team. Yeah. And then you've got a nice 25-point lead in the third quarter. And then you look around with two minutes to go in the fourth and you're down three and you're wondering why that happened. I I agree. You took your foot off the gas. Like the, the, the men, the mentality to be dialed in every play. Like this is an important game that matters because even though it was just the Spurs, the lowly Spurs, the 16 win Spurs, that game mattered to the Suns, and they couldn't be dialed in enough. Well, I mean, they went, they went from sixth to eighth. And and they that knew that would happen with with that loss. They they and they I, had to. I know it was a half. I know it's a half game. I know. I understand. But they went from sixth, a locked in spot, to eighth. All they had to do was win last night. Win, and they would have kept pace. Going into a game against Denver. Going into a game against the. You know, the Denver Nuggets who have beat your ass on a regular basis. This is when the Suns need to turn up the temperature. I mean, to me, that's. Yeah, I don't know. Like Keon, this, this is, maybe I'm wrong. We say this in because it's in it's true in every sport. When do you want to be the hottest? Going into the playoffs. There are 11 10. games left. You got to do something here. <laughs> yeah. You, you've got you've got a handful of games. If you don't get this thing started now, when is it going to get, get when is it going to get started? And that's been that's been a problem yeah. for the Suns. And I think that would be a problem going forward. We've got uh, more text on the text line. I will uh, at least catch up to some of the Sun stuff. Finish that off. And then we've got to move on in the show. We have so much stuff we plan to talk about today. And uh, look, I appreciate you guys jumping on and making this thing fun and, and interesting, but uh, we, we have got to keep this moving, and we will on the Daily Blender on 1580 The Fanatic. Progressive presents 10 things on a food truck owner's to-do list that are harder than getting a commercial auto insurance quote. Stocking the fridge, prepping the stations, finding employees that get along well, finding employees that actually do their job. Look at it, you, Gary. Balancing the books, balancing the flavors, having a fresh menu and fresh produce and fresh meat, but never a fresh mouth. But the easiest thing on a small business owner's to-do list? Seeing if you can save on commercial auto insurance. Get a quote in as little as six minutes at ProgressiveCommercial.com. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates. Coverage subject to policy terms and conditions. My brother-in-law died suddenly, and now my sister and her kids have to sell their home. That's why I told my husband we could not put off getting life insurance any longer. An agent offered us a 10-year, $500,000 policy for nearly $50 a month. Then we called SelectQuote. SelectQuote found us identical coverage for only $19 a month, a savings of $369 a year. 
Whether you need a $500,000 policy or a $5 million policy, Select Quote could save you more than 50% on term life insurance. For your free quote, call Select Quote at 1 800 452 5050. That's 1 800 452 5050. Or go to SelectQuote.com. 1 800 452 5050. That's 1 800 452 5050. Select Quote. We shop. You save. Details on example rate at selectquote.com. Hey, Jeffrey O'Brien here. And listen, Phoenix has had over 53 days of 110 degree plus this summer. This last July alone, we had 30 consecutive days of 110 plus. And this summer heat might just be the new normal for summers here in Arizona. What you need to do is call Harmon Solar today. Harmon Solar could save you over 80% off your electric bills. They're a locally owned, family owned company. Call Harmon Solar for a free estimate, 800-281-3189. That's 800-281-3189 or go to harmonsolar.com. Imagine your team always looking and feeling their best in high-performance technical workwear. Cintas can make it happen. They have garments for almost every job imaginable. And with the Cintas workwear program, you get freshly laundered garments delivered every week for everyone on your team. Great garments without the bother of laundry. That's a real perk for employees. Find out how Cintas can boost team image and morale. Visit Cintas.com. Oh, I'm ready! And get ready for the workday. Hey, what's up, everybody? Ken Barkley here reminding you to check out You Better, You Bet. Why, you ask? Well, because we bring the fun, the insight, and all the wagertainment you need. Plus, hopefully, we win a couple bets along the way. From up-to-the-minute breakdowns of backdoor covers, bad beats, and the cheers and tears that come with them, obviously. Plus, betting analysis from some of the best minds in the sports wagering world. Join myself and Nick Costos and tune into You Better, You Bet. Weekdays from noon to 3 on Arizona Sports Betting Station 1580 and 99.3 The Fanatic. Welcome back to the Daily Blender here on 1580 The Fanatic. We've got a text line that is full of members of the fourth dimension jumping in on the show, buzzing and, and making this thing really fun. I, I appreciate it. And, uh, uh, and I also appreciate a lot of the, the, the really good responses to some of this Sun stuff from Suns fans, from Laker fans, from other people too. I, I think I've, I've learned, I've learned quite a bit. So, Let's get back to it. I'm going to read a, a handful more text here and at least get the sun stuff wrapped up. Uh, and then we'll, we'll move on with the show because we do have a lot of other stuff to get to. Uh, nine, four or sorry, nine, seven, four, seven says, uh, did somebody already say the Nets have been involved in the two worst trades in NBA history? Um, no, nobody said that. Nobody did say that. Are you saying that they were both on the wrong end and then the best end of it? Because I I don't I don't know what else we're talking about the Nets for. Obviously, trading for James Harden wasn't a great idea, but then they turned around and traded James Harden for Ben Simmons. Is that what you're talking about, or are you saying the Durant trade being one of the worst trades in NBA history for the Suns and the Nets were involved? Got to clear that up there, 9747. Please, I'm begging you. Also, maybe a, maybe a text or nickname. It looks like you've texted yeah. before. So, need a, need a text or nickname on that. It's about time, sir. Get yeah. on it. Or, or ma'am, actually. I don't know who you are. Mm. Niho says, after hearing Randy wanting to beat players' asses, I retract my kind and respectful statement. Uh, because, <laughs> Niho, this has never been a kind and respectful show, and I am, I am sorry you were under that delusion. <laughs> I I don't know what caused you to think that. Yeah. Uh, but here, here we are. Hefty Lefty says Nick Saban is available for the Suns. That's true. Mm. That is technically true. Well, I mean, if, if the Suns were a football team, I mean, <laughs> you, you'd be, you'd I'd be, be happy to have on that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Just not uh, for the Suns, obviously, for obvious reasons. So let's get back to the regularly scheduled show the previously okay. scheduled show Randy. All right. All right. <laughs> you, you, you were kind enough to pull all these stories together we haven't got to yeah <laughs> <laughs> so let's get to it uh the boston celtics involved in their own disappointing game oh. last night they were playing the uh, atlanta hawks <sighs> and then and then proceeded to do something uh the likes of which do, does not happen very often in the nba 
which is that the massive uh, 30 point lead that the Celtics built up against the Atlanta Hawks. Yeah. They blew the whole thing. Holy, mm. just, just gone. Uh, it was so bad. Every Atlanta Hawks player that started was in double figures, plus just another person off the bench. And that's not even counting other people who scored off the bench. Those are just the people in double figures. <sighs> this happens with the Celtics. They just stop. <laughs> you know, they got the, See, the, the Mitch McConnell. Somebody unplugged the controller and they're just, <laughs> just stuck there. I, I, you know, I, th I think that th this is good for the Celtics. I think this is something that the Celtics needed against a team that is clearly not as good as them. The Atlanta Hawks are not as good as the uh, Boston Celtics. Below 500. And and the the the, the Atlanta Hawks are a team that uh, are clearly not going to uh, be any threat to the uh, the Celtics and yet the Celtics went into this game built up a 30 point lead by halftime and the Hawks cut into that like in the third and then and then caught up in the fourth and took the damn lead in the fourth. And and beat the Celtics. This is not supposed to happen, right? I mean, everybody's saying the Celtics are the team to beat in the East, and uh, Atlanta. Uh, oops, Atlanta just beat them. Came from thirty down. I think this is good for the uh, Celtics. I'll be honest with you. I I feel good about something like this in the regular season. I think this is going to help the Celtics refocus. We can be beat by anybody in this league. You know, sometimes you get so, I don't know, you, you get so, uh, it, it, not egotistical, but you, you get so big for your britches. You think you can go out there and just run up the score on anybody. And uh, what, what the Celtics had, like a nine-game winning streak, five-game, seven-game, nine-game. Yeah, was, coming into yeah. this game. And uh, I, I think they just overlooked yeah, this nine. game. Nine game winning streak. And and they thought they could uh, just walk out there and just uh, uh, shut the door on the, uh, on the Hawks and, uh, and move on. But I, I don't know, Keon, I mean, you know, NBA way better than me, but it seems like to me, this is a good thing for the uh, Celtics. And uh, this is something that the, the Hawks can learn from. Right, I mean, they can learn how to beat a good team. Uh, this is good for their uh, their family. This is good for their society. This is good for their uh, psyche. But I mean, Boston to blow a thirty point lead to it, Atlanta. Yeah, look, it's a below five hundred Atlanta team. It's a very bad team. <laughs> um, Trey Young has been out. So he yeah. didn't play. That's their best player. Right. And you blew a 30 point lead to that team. Right. Um, and, and it's not like there aren't good players on the Hawks still, but they're not very deep. And I don't think that you would say that anybody that there aren't stars on that team beyond Trey. So these are just really good players that just, you know, play well together. I, I think that for for Boston, this can be a good thing. I just I want to see what they learn from it. You know, like if they come out the I, next game I, and it's still flat, they still look like, you know, they're just stuck in neutral. That that's going to be a problem. Don't um, you think this, this is going to refocus them though? I, it it has to. This is a and and they and you can look at their their season and see they've they've lost fifteen times and throughout the fifteen losses, there's it's usually a, a giant streak of games and then they start to get a little loose. Then they start to get a little sloppy with how they. They 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 take care of the basketball and some of the, the the passes aren't sharp and that's really a big part of what Boston does is how well they move the ball. So when they're they're taking things for granted when they're overlooking opponents, it always catches up to them. And you know one one last reminder: a handful of games before the playoffs start would be nice and and get it get it out of your system now before right. things start to get really really hard. I also think it's just a constant reminder that if you're uh, down in the NBA but you can shoot threes, you're not actually out of any game. And so you, you keep your head on a swivel if you're the Boston Celtics or any other team 
because you're, you're not out of the woods if you're beating somebody by 20. It feels good. Mm. But, you know, you you have a, a, a quarter where you're cold from the field and they're shooting and they're and they're hot. Even if you play good defense, they're going to cut into it. But it doesn't it does, I, I didn't see any defense from the Celtics in the second half of that game. Yeah. Uh, well, the, uh, the four assists in the second half for Boston. That's just not I how mean, they play that. that Yeah, that, they move the ball. I mean, I, Boston moves the ball around and uh for them to go only four assists in the second half, that's got to tell you uh, that's got to be a, you know, a tale of what uh, the Celtics did in the second half. Uh, they they are forty five and eight with uh, twenty four or more assists, and now twelve and seven with twenty three or few. So the, the 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 Celtics have to move the ball around, and if they're not, they're going to get beat. So teams out there listening right now in the Eastern Conference, which I'm sure that all of the Eastern Conference is listening to this radio show right now. Of course. <laughs> your your uh, finest source for news on the Eastern We're giving you the way to beat the Boston Celtics in the second half. You know, stop them from moving the ball. But, uh, I mean, wow, that was shocking to me. 30 points at halftime, and they couldn't close the game. If, if you fall asleep in this league, you will lose basketball games. That is I, a lesson I think the top teams learn all the time, and the Celtics learned it in potentially the worst way. My, the only thing that worries me with the Celtics is they have another loss, and I was trying to look it up before the show, and I couldn't remember which one it was. But the, the Celtics had another loss where they were up by 26 or 27, and they blew it. It might have been to the Bucs mm. earlier in the season. It was a better team than the Hawks. But still, when you're up by that many points, got to stay focused. And if yeah. you don't, the, the teams in this league, especially the ones that shoot from long range very well, and even without Trey Young, the Hawks absolutely qualify with a guy like DeAndre Hunter, who led all scorers on that team with 24 points. Um, and uh, DeJounte Murray is a very good three-point shooter, and Bogdan Bogdanovich is really good. So yeah. those yeah. those guys together put on a, a three-point shooting performance where, look, you've got to get stops, but if you can't get stops, if you're up by 30, at least answer. <laughs> you, you have to basically stop scoring to let oh, a yeah. team come back you, in that you, way. You've got to figure out a way to squelch it. You've got to figure out a way to to uh, to uh, uh, just stop it. And uh, the Celtics could not figure out a way to stop it. I mean, they, they got stuck in the second half of that game last night. They just kind of let off the gas and thought, you know, hey, you know, life's good. We're uh, going to win this game pretty easy. And all of a sudden, whoop, what happened? Yeah. Wait, wait what? Wait, what? And I, I like the Celtics a lot, but this is this is a team I don't necessarily trust because they have those moments. You know, th- this team should have a finals already. They should have a finals. They they played the Warriors and well, they 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 are a team though, Keon. That that have uh, it, they've already clinched, right? I mean, they've yeah. <laughs> so they're just kind of going through the paces, right? I mean, yeah. I still I still think that you want to be you you want to give yourself that confidence. You want well, to yes yes to be sharp and on top of everything. And, yes, I mean to win early. I I feel like to win early, you've got to be careful. I mean, you you've got to keep up the intensity, and I think that's uh something that the the Celtics are going to have to struggle with uh, moving on for the next uh, uh, two weeks. So, yeah, uh, I, I, I will, we'll see how they do in the playoffs, but like, this is a problem that they've had in years past too, where oh, they yeah. just, yeah. they're not the most focused team, especially, you know, when things start going wrong in the playoffs, then to it the just, Hawks, it's a snowball effect to the Hawks of all teams. Anyway, wow. um, Let's get to some NFL news because the NFL owners meetings are are happening and, and yeah, they Disney keep, World. Yeah. They keep changing the name of these meetings. By the way, they used to be it used to be the rules meeting, and then they changed it to the to the owners, the owners. meeting, and now yeah. it's just the NFL annual meetings. Even though there uh, are other meetings that happen throughout the year that are uh, also annual, so I have no right. idea what yeah. they're doing. But regardless, um, we you we, call them what you want, Keon. You call them what you want. Go ahead. It, I, I it's I don't want to say it's. It's confusing, but it, you know, you know, Jeffrey would call it branding. What, you do, do, do what you want to. It, it, this is you go ahead, Keon. So the one of the things that they changed at this this meeting was yeah. the the kickoff rule. Oh. Um, 
And and uh, this this basically has killed kickoffs. <laughs> you know, I, I don't think they want to make the move to just eliminate it outright. But clearly, uh, they're legislating kickoffs out of the game. So here is how the rules work. Kickers will continue to kick from the 35 yard line. But the other 10 players on the kickoff team will line up at the receiving team's 40 yard line. At least nine of the members of the return team will line up in a setup zone between the 35 and the 30 yard lines and up to two returners can line up in a landing zone between the goal line and the 20 yard line. So they've really just spread this thing out to where there's just about nowhere the ball could go. That's really returnable. (laughs) Um, And, and so it's, it's, well, they're, they're, they're they're trying to take the, uh, the danger out of the kickoffs, right? I mean, they're, with with the whole concussion thing, they're trying to take that away, right? I mean, yeah, um, and, and this that's, is that a, was the, the play that had the most concussions of any play. In football. This is a uh, this is a play they've taken once again. The NFL stealing from one of the spring football leagues that uh, Jeffrey and and uh, and I and 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 you, Keon, keep uh, trying to uh, disintegrate here on the show as being uh, you know something that uh, has no relevance. But it's just the NFL football. keeps. Uh, the, the NFL keeps taking from them, right? I mean, this is a, a an XFL uh, format kickoff from last season, is it not? It is. I mean, this yeah. is this is where uh, the, the the teams line up, and uh, nobody moves until the kicker kicks the ball, and it gets into a zone. When the football gets into a zone, or the receiver grabs the ball, then the the other two, uh, other teams, uh, the, uh, the other uh, players on the team can start moving and blocking. And, uh, yeah, I don't know. I mean, yesterday, I feel like yesterday's tackling uh, rule was something that's, uh, that's going to kill football. Uh, today, I don't, I don't think this is anything that's going to kill football. I think, to be honest with you, I mean, I, I, mean, I the guys are only 10 yards apart. I mean, mm-hmm. this could lead to more exciting kickoffs. I mean, they, they're hoping that uh, the special teams coaches that were involved in in proposing this rule and hopefully implementing it, right, think that it'll actually increase returns eighty percent. I, I think this could be exciting as far as returns. As a matter of fact, the Steelers have gone out and 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 made a pickup. We could talk about that after the break, but I mean that the kickoff rule basically is uh, the two teams line up inside the uh, receiving team's uh, 40 and 30-yard line, and uh, the kicker kicks off. And then the uh, when, the, when the other receiver basically gets the football, the action starts. And uh, the Steelers, I think, are trying to make a move here to get, you know, ahead of this curve. But we'll have to wait and see. I mean – I with the with the with the addition of the uh, uh, stopping the uh, the hip drop tackle, and uh, it, with the ad- addition of this uh, new kickoff rule, I, is it going to make the NFL more exciting? Keon? I don't. I, the, the kickoff rule might. Um, the the hip drop. The, there is a, a silver lining to the hip drop tackle, which is that. <laughs> well, I'd I'd love to know what it is because I, everybody's mad. Everybody's mad, but it, I, somebody was posting it. You know just the, the highlights of how people tackled in the the 90s and 2000s people didn't hip drop tackle back then well no <laughs> you know what i mean they, so they, like the feet legs you know, yeah yeah and, and there was a lot of you hit a guy in the middle and then you gator roll yeah that was ray lewis's move constantly oh, yeah, yeah. i'm just saying maybe we could get back to, to teaching these guys how to tackle Correct tackling. It, for, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. Technique. So you're not always relying on the hip drop. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean because there was a place for the hip drop, but they were looking at the trend of hip drop tackles and it was increasing more and more every year. So players weren't doing it. And mm-hmm. then they started to do it a lot. And yeah. uh, 15 guys got injured on hip drop tackles. So hopefully it's you're, you're well, you can't you can't go at the knees. Uh, you, yeah, you, I mean, you can't do the hip drop. You can't do the, uh, you know, you can't uh, you can't grab them by the nameplate. What do you what do you call it? The, the horse collar. You can't the horse collar into the can't, pad and pull back. Can't do that. Uh, so you're going to have to uh, increase uh, your tackling technique. You've got to keep your head. Uh, if, you know, you've got to keep your head up and not down. Yeah. See I, what I, you're hitting. And I mean, 
I, it's going to it's going to force coaches to teach tackling technique a whole different way. It seems like to me. Yeah, I, what what I think is uh, sad is uh, for defensive players is they always feel like they're the ones that have to give in the name of player safety. Well, I, we we have to give up another thing, and the offense I, never I, gives up anything. I feel like that's true, and I, yeah. and I do think that the hip drop t- drop tackle also has a lot to do with uh, not just keeping players healthy so that you can make money off of them, but yeah. also so that you can you can get the you can get the offense another advantage <laughs> this is more points well i mean more look, scoring I mean, more money i mean uh, look if uh, you know king henry goes by me i'm gonna grab his damn hair i i'm i'm sorry i'm gonna grab his and, hair and you can because it's and below I, the nameplate i look if it's <laughs> if his hair is hanging out there i'm grabbing his hair and right. then i'm gonna wrap him up and i'm gonna drag him down so if i'm a defensive guy i, I don't know what i'm whining about today i i just i go out there and i i I wrap these guys up like we're supposed to do. Keep your head up, wrap them up, and take them down. And you wait for your teammates. And teammates, get in there and 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 help your uh, defensive buddies. We got to take a break. We do. Uh, yeah, we're we're up against it. There are a couple of more rules we'll get to, and also the the NFLPA grades are are making an impact here. Some of these owners are starting to change some things up based on the F's that the teams have gotten. So we'll get into that a little bit as well. You're listening to The Daily Blender here on 1580 The Fanatic. <coughs> oh, this cold. Honey. <laughs> honey. Honey, you need DayQuil Severe Honey. DayQuil Severe Honey gives you powerful cold and flu symptom relief with a honey-licious taste. Because life doesn't stop for a cold. Okay, I'm ready to go. <coughs> <coughs> now I'm getting a cold. Honey. Try DayQuil Severe Honey for powerful cold and flu relief. DayQuil Severe with honey flavor. The daytime coughing, aching, stuffy head, fever, honey-licious, power through your day, medicine. Use as directed. Keep out of reach of children. Hey, Ralph, got another solar question for you. Okay, but did you check out the Harmon Solar podcast first? The what? The Harmon Solar podcast. We put new episodes up twice a month that teach you all the things you ever wanted to learn about solar. We discuss things like how solar works, the roofing, sales process, demand management, everything solar. Show like this needs some real smart thinkers, huh? Well, yeah. So you got some really great guests then, huh? Almost every show. Is it on Spotify? Yep. iTunes? Yep. Just search it everywhere. It's the Harmon Solar podcast. Go check it out at harmonsolar.com. You know, it seems like everybody's talking about the traffic on Valley Roads these days. You know what else everybody's talking about? The absolute best restaurant to take your family and friends to, Kasai Japanese Steakhouse. Now with two Valley locations. No one does it better than Kasai, where talented teppan chefs create the food, the fire, and the fun of teppanyaki. Kasai Japanese Steakhouse is dinnertainment at its best, where a delicious seven-course meal is prepared right at your table with flair. It is a perfect choice for any occasion. Choose from over 50 different items and combinations of teppanyaki. Looking for great dining without the show kasai offers an awesome selection on asian inspired dishes and tasty sushi happy hour deals daily from 6 p.m and enjoy outdoor dining on the heated patio so whether you're here for spring training march madness or just to enjoy the arizona sunshine don't just take your guests to dinner you take them to kasai japanese steakhouse with two locations scottsdale and now in peoria at the 101 in northern go to kasai teppan.com that's k-a-s-a-i teppan.com or search kasai on your mobile phone Hey everybody, it's Mark Asher back to tell you about my great friends at the Lund Mortgage Team. Did you know that the Lund Mortgage Team was founded back in 1999? That's right, they're celebrating 25 years in existence this year. And you know what you have to do to stay in business that long? You have to be good at what you do. And the Lund Mortgage Team is not just good, they are great. They have helped thousands of people save thousands of dollars over those 25 years here in the Valley of the Sun. They only lend in Arizona. And they're mortgage brokers, which means they can shop your rate around. They're not tied to just one set of rates. Mortgage rates can get crazy. They can get high. They can get low. There's good times to strike, and there's times to stay on the sideline. Let the Lund Mortgage Team be your coach, be your team leader when it comes to these huge decisions. Call 623-875-9940. That's 623-875-9940. Or you can always check them out at lundmortgage.com. Great website with all the tools you need. Call them today. They're my great friends, and you'll love them. It's the Lund Mortgage Team. If you hit, pass it, dunk it, shoot it, check it, throw it, put it, or block it. Then we're going to talk about it. I like that. I just thought I'd clear that up. 1580 and 99.3, The Fanatic. And always on at 1580thefanatic.com. Well, 
Welcome back to the Daily Blender. 1580 The Fanatic. We are coming up to the end of hour number two. You are on the text line, 888-368-1580. We will get back to the text line and clean that up here in just a second. But uh, I, I do want to uh, talk about the Steelers a little bit because the new return rule is supposed to actually increase the number of returns but what it's supposed to do also is diminish the intensity of the collisions essentially so that you've got all of these guys five yards apart and so the 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 hits aren't going to be as five or ten right is it yeah five or ten yards apart and and so you're you're getting uh the the rules to to allow for more return attempts which I, I think I think we all want uh, the return attempts last year were down to twenty one point seven percent, according to the the ESPN over there. Um, and that's a league low. It, it, there have never been so few returns in the history of football. So uh, I, I don't think we're going to see returns in the same way, but we are going to see them again. And the Pittsburgh Steelers went out and got Corderell Patterson. Um, in light of all the new uh, return changes to to the kickoff. So, That is a good sign because you're starting to see teams actually react to the rules and what they expect and anticipate the rules to do. And it's uh, it's pretty smart on the part of the of the Pittsburgh Steelers uh, to go out and make a move like that. Seems like the NFL teams are going to need returners now. You know, it's going to bring that returner position back in uh, to the game. Don't you think? Or, yeah, because it, it's a kind of a position that you used to have to worry about on your roster. You're cutting down to the 53 man, and then you're like, "Man, I I need somebody who's going to be a return specialist." And do I use a roster spot for that? From which position group do I take? Or, from that? or do I use a yeah yeah? And now it's a choice that you don't really have to make because um, unless you have somebody who is just that guy, and even returning the ball five yards into the end zone isn't a problem for him. Most teams don't have that. Most teams have just decided, you know what, we'll take the extra receiver or the extra tight end or running back or whatever the case may be and pass on, you know, the return guy. So this is this is something that can potentially flip games uh, and, and maybe make it interesting again. So uh, we'll, we'll see, because one, one of the things that I was actually concerned with, especially in light of Devin Hester making it to, uh, 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 you know, the, the finalists in the. Uh, Hall of Fame voting mm-hmm. um, was the, Devin Hester, just as a special teams player, was able to change games entirely and single handedly save games. Um, and and I miss that. I miss that about watching football. And so maybe it's back. Maybe maybe we've got a chance. Um, or maybe <laughs> maybe this thing just kills kickoffs. I, I, I think they're I think they're going to have to move the ball back because they're still kicking off from the thirty five. Yeah, that's the problem. Like, that's what's causing and, all the touchbacks. And, and most uh, kickers in the NFL from the 35 can kick, the, kick it through the end zone. And I do mean, frequently. I mean, we see it all the time. I mean, don't you think they're still going to do that? I mean. what? Because if there's somebody who's dangerous, the ball is in their hands, and this is a completely unscheduled kind of play. Not completely, but it, it's partially that. Because you never know how, how kickoff co- coverage is going to play out. When you have that, <laughs> you're trying to figure out how to yeah, keep yeah. it away from that human being. Keep so it out even, of their hands. So maybe. Even even though the Steelers signed Corderell Patterson, I mean, how how effective is he going to be if he's uh, on the one-yard line or he's standing one yard deep in the end zone and, uh, you know, the uh, you know the, uh, the Ravens kick it through the damn end zone? I mean, yeah, I, I think to me, I could see this being more effective if they move the ball back to the 20 and, and they might because Roger Goodell also said in, in the interview that he was that they were going to tinker with it. Like they're going to try it this year as it currently is. And then if the ball needs to be moved back, you know, if you're seeing a lot of the, the returns, but the collisions aren't bad, the injuries aren't crazy, then you want to see some more returns as the league. It's an exciting mm. play. So then you start mm. to consider backing the ball up and whatever, I don't know, whatever other changes you, you might I need think to make after yesterday. And today from Disney world, I think the, the owners are Mickey mouse has got in there and uh, had done his work. He just Mickey <laughs> mouse up the, uh, the damn rules of the NFL. 
I, so. I don't know about that. Uh, I think with the hip drop tackle, my problem with it is that it's just not clear. I, I, I get it. I understand that. But it, that, that seems to be the only way that the defense can tackle guys. I mean, they, but, they, it, they, it, but if you go at the knees, if you go at the midsection, I mean, if your head's down, I mean, there's so many variables to tackling nowadays. And that's the reason why I have said I, I think defenses shouldn't have to keep giving back. Or if you if you take something from the defense, give them something in return. Yeah. Like, yeah. like don't don't just take from them all the time. Players aren't safe here. Defense sacrifice the, the stuff you do to make the, to make us all happy and safer. They, they've got to give something back to those guys on the defensive side of the yeah, ball. If you take one soft, thing, put something opinion. else back over there. I don't know. Um, the other thing that the NFL changed was the trade deadline. They pushed that back to after week nine, which I think is a, is, is a good call. Why um, is that good? Why is that good? I, because I think it keeps, it keeps the competitive window of a lot of teams open. Like the one thing, you know, that happens in football all the time is just that injuries happen. And so teams get star players injured or key pieces injured. And then the season can just be depending on who you are over your best receiver goes down, your tight end goes down, whatever, you know, like it, I, if you were the Giants last year contending for a playoff spot and Saquon went down, you were done uh, that like that. That happens all the time to teams in this league, you know, where players just just get injured and all that. And then you have to figure out how to move to fill that gap. And if you if you're still in the window of trading, then you can you can you can you can figure out what you can give up, what you can afford to give up. Maybe it's draft picks. Maybe it's young players. Maybe it's a contract that um, is is a favorable contract for the team getting it. Whatever it is, you can you can figure out what you can give up so that your team is still at its strength and can still play the way that they that they're good at playing. And so you're just you're just opening up, I think, the competitive window and making it last a lot longer. Hmm. So that's why I think it's a good thing. I, I, what are your thoughts on that? Hmm. <laughs> I mean, I, I I think they're getting soft, but that I mean that's the, the I mean, trade the that, trade deadline doesn't change the toughness though. Yeah, uh, well, the trade deadline is just can you go trade for I, a guy if, a little if, bit later? If you were a team like the Chiefs and uh, you you one of your guys gets hurt, uh, and now you have a chance to go out and make a move for a superstar and and uh, you know get another championship. Meanwhile. But it's not just the Chiefs. Like, this applies. Well, I mean, y- you know what I'm saying. A team that has all the advantages now has another advantage moving in deep into the season. I, I Maybe, know. but, like, if you're the Chiefs, you're already going to – if you lose Travis Kelsey, that's probably an awful thing. But anybody that's not well, Mahomes I mean, look at the Kelsey, Ravens last year. Look at the Ravens last year. Would this have helped the Ravens? Who would they have well, gotten the- late in the season? Uh, when it, uh, uh, they're a uh, uh, tight end, what's his name? Went Mark, down. Mark Andrews went down. I don't it, think that the Ravens are the best they, example because they, mm, they already had a guy in Isaiah likely that was mm, kind of right behind him and ready to go. I'm, they, just, I'm just saying. Yeah. Just saying. I, I just, I just think that if you're a team that's more on the bubble, maybe you have a quarterback that's not Lamar Jackson, Josh Allen, Patrick Mahomes, your, your quarterback's more average, more mortal. Maybe you're the the Falcons with Kirk I, I, Cousins. I feel you, like you need those pieces to work. Later in the season gives these guys an opportunity to to really bolster their team. It seems it, like the teams that are, you know, in front always seem to figure out a way to bolster their teams. Where the teams that are not competing, they somehow can't get the. Uh, you, you see what yeah, I'm saying? Because there, there are buyers and sellers in a, yeah, in a trade deadline. Yeah, you know, so yeah. It, yeah, obviously, if you're out front, you're going to be a buyer. Um, and if you're if you're behind, you're you're a seller, and you're you're hoping to to get picks and stuff, which is something that's still valuable to you. <laughs> you know, you you can still yeah. you can still help yourself moving forward, even if this season, all right, season might be toast. Uh, but that's just the way that I see it. How does the fourth dimension see it? By the way, you can join us on eight 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 three six eight fifteen eighty. Um, Noah says, unfortunately, though, Randy. An elderly Phil Jackson is not walking through that door at the Footprint Center to lead yeah. the Suns, and neither is the corpse of Bobby Knight to rile up yeah. the Suns team. Yeah. They have to stick with Vogel and make it work. Yeah. And, and I agree with Noah. As, as of right now, yeah. whatever you've got is what you've got. The players have yeah. got to figure out how to make it work. Vogel's got to figure out how to make it work. 
I think if Vogel wants to keep his job, he's got to make it work. I, I do yeah. think he's on the hot seat because the window is closing. Quiet Cannon says, I think it's pretty obvious that the Suns are a different team when they are behind. When they yeah. get ahead, they lose their killer instinct. Forget the philosophy. You need the killer instinct, the dagger. And I 100% agree. Mr. Wilbur, Kiss the Cook, Flappy Max, Jiggy, so many more. We'll get to you here in just a little bit. You're listening to The Daily Blender on 1580 The Fanatic. That's 800-281-3189 or go to harmonsolar.com. When it's time for the March Mania brackets to bust wide open. As I was saying, it's mad. The Mania of March at BetUS.com is all about those buzzer beats. Bonus offers. And when the madness starts and Cinderella man steps under the BetUS always has your back with back to back to back 125% sign up bonuses on your first three deposits. And even 10% gambler's insurance. <laughs> BetUS.com Sportsbook and Casino, where the game <laughs> Join today. BetUS Sportsbook and Casino, where the game begins. When you wake up well-rested on a great mattress, everything becomes clear. My life coach has a terrible life. Things you missed when you were tired finally reveal themselves. I use memes as a coping mechanism. At Mattress Firm, we know the right mattress matters. While supplies last, save up to 50% on select Temper Adapt floor models. All with free and fast delivery. The right mattress matters. We'll find yours. Restrictions apply. See store or website for details. Imagine your team always looking and feeling their best in high-performance technical workwear. Cintas can make it happen. They have garments for almost every job imaginable. And with the Cintas workwear program, you get freshly laundered garments delivered every week for everyone on your team. Great garments without the bother of laundry. That's a real perk for employees. Find out how Cintas can boost team image and morale. Visit Cintas.com. Oh, I'm ready! And get ready for the workday. You know, it seems like everybody's talking about the traffic on Valley Roads these days. You know what else everybody's talking about? The absolute best restaurant to take your family and friends to. Kasai Japanese Steakhouse. Now with two Valley locations. No one does it better than Kasai, where talented teppan chefs create the food, the fire, and the fun of teppanyaki. Kasai Japanese Steakhouse is dinnertainment at its best, where a delicious seven-course meal is prepared right at your table with flair. It's a perfect choice for any occasion. Choose from over 50 different items and combinations of teppanyaki. Looking for great dining without the show? Kasai offers an awesome selection on Asian inspired dishes and tasty sushi happy hour deals daily from 6 p.m and enjoy outdoor dining on the heated patio so whether you're here for spring training march madness or just to enjoy the arizona sunshine don't just take your guests to dinner you take them to kasai japanese steakhouse with two locations scottsdale and now in peoria at the 101 in northern go to kasai teppan.com that's k-a-s-a-i teppan.com or search kasai on your mobile phone KQFN Tempe. Also transmitting on K25CD Phoenix at 99.3 FM. And K24EU Fountain Hills at 95.9 FM. It's time for the third. Hour. And people sit down because it's time. Time for what? Showtime. When does it start? Right now. Three, two, one. Let's get on with the show. Let's do it. Welcome back to the Daily Blender. You're listening to 1580 The Fanatic, live from the Harmon Solar Studios in Scottsdale, Arizona. And we are in hour three here on this Tuesday afternoon. And we'd like to thank you for joining us on the text line where you make stuff happen. 888-368-1580. And also, if you've been waiting on the text line, I I appreciate you just uh, sending in the text and then having to sit back and and wait for it because it's blowing up. We've got a text line that's (laughs) that's, well, that's more full than uh, than I've ever seen it. uh, Nice. There we go. Yeah. In in the big boy chair. So here we go. Well, I mean, I mean, it's 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 because of you, Keon. (laughs) I don't know about that. You're in the big boy chair and uh, you're driving the show. 
It's clear that everybody wants to talk to Keon. I, I mean, I don't know about that. I think, I think we just now. have a very we have a very passionate show today. It's very, you know, the, the Suns got everybody fired mm-hmm. up. Well, so that uh, to be fair, Suns losing, Suns that, losing, that, 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 and that was a loss. That was egregious. Oh so there yeah. are people here to figure out what's wrong, pay their respects, laugh. Which brings us to our next point, Mister Wilbur, on the text line says since the Suns are out of the playoffs and the Diamondbacks don't have a place to play their games. Now wait. Let's minute. move to football. Can you please explain to me these new dumb tackling rules as well as the kickoff now, rules? Now wait. Um, okay. okay. Hey, <laughs> what do you mean the Diamondbacks don't have a place to play their games? Hey, there'll be, be a bank one ballpark. They are there tonight. Uh, they have been there last night and they will be there all season long. Uh, so I, I don't understand that. So that's statement. so that's one and two. The Suns are out of the playoffs. Suns are not out. Sit. Well, I mean, right now they're in the play-in. They're they're yeah. What but, are they eight? But, but they they're they're eighth. So they're still in the 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 spot. Only in the half play-in. game out of six. Yeah. Look, I don't I don't enjoy that <laughs> them being at eight. But eight is where you would be if the playoffs were what they used to be, and there was no play-in. You're, mm. you're you're still not in a bad spot because if yeah. you're in if you're in that top part of the playing game that seven eight you win you're in that's it yeah. done yeah. Uh, if you lose You're that's still where ahead you make... of the still ahead of the Lakers yeah so don't make things complicated for yourself yeah uh, game and a half win is it a game and a half ahead yeah like Lakers? you don't want to be in the playing game at all to just, be clear just keep just keep beating just keep winning but you end hey. up in that lower half you are putting yourself in a very bad spot Damn so uh, yeah. yeah avoid that please yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. But but yeah, Mr. Wilbur, look, I've never made a blind joke about you. Not one. Not ever. I um, have. And it, clearly you can't see <laughs> oh uh, through the trees, uh, Mr. Wilbur. So relax. <laughs> I wasn't I wasn't going to start today, but just where, where mm-hmm. did you see that, Mr. Wilbur? And then I mm-hmm. realized that maybe that wasn't uh, the, the kind And of he thing. just made a blind joke about just, you, Wilbur. I, no, I was going to okay. I was going to genuinely just, ask where that. Where did you and see then, that? See and then I, I mean? realized that I was yeah. that might be a wrong question yeah. to ask. I, of course, so you can't I, see what I mean because I, you're blind. <laughs> Mr. Wilbur, I, I I think I definitely avoided that, Mr. Wilbur. No, I don't think you uh, did. <laughs> okay, maybe I clumsily avoided it, but I do mm. think I avoided it. Kiss the Cook says, what's happening with Isaiah Thomas? You have a ball handler sitting on the bench that could help you in the fourth quarter. Or is he just there to have lunch with the team? Look, man, I don't know. Um, I, and Isaiah actually, Thomas Sr. or Jr.? Uh, well, well, neither, actually. Just a di- different, younger, different Isaiah Thomas. He is... Uh, his name is spelled differently, so it's just like not related at all. Um, um but he's so he's, somebody idolized Isaiah Thomas and chose to name his son uh, and just kind of change a around a a vowel. Yeah, or, I think he doesn't have an A. I, yeah, how do you uh, get Isaiah without an A? It's just it's it's. Hmm. I I don't I don't know exactly which letter is gone. Uh, Was it an I? I, I think maybe it, you dropped an I. There was two eyes in Isaiah, right? There, yeah. Um, there's the Isaiah, yeah, and so then I, there's like an I. I think this Isaiah Thomas has an extra A, is what it is. It's got um, an it's, extra A. Yeah. Isaiah. Yeah. Thomas. It's like it's like A I A H A I A. So yeah, mm. but he's he and he's been in the league before. He's been out of the league. Mm. It's one of the the weirdest things because when he was playing, obviously he could play. Mm. You know, he's a smaller player, but, you know, you ask the Boston Celtics well, about the Thomas heroics. was sort of a smaller player anyway. Yeah. Um, but, but when this, he was with Detroit, I mean, he was sort of smaller. And then he uh, snubbed Michael Jordan. And then now he wants Michael Jordan to apologize. And Michael Jordan's not going to because Isaiah Thomas snubbed him. Yeah. Uh, when the uh, Bulls beat him. Though, to be and, clear, uh, this is a very different Isaiah Thomas. Mm. Um and same name though. I mean, same name, yeah, but different guy. Uh, and and he, he same sort of hatred. I think. He's I mean, got I think a lot Michael of... Jordan probably doesn't like this Isaiah Thomas, or the original, or Junior. To be fair I mean, to Michael Jordan, not a ton of people that he he does genuinely seem to like. I think he um, likes me. His, his, I think his if he met me, I think if he met me, he would like me. You're Randy White, of course he'd like you. Well, I think would Michael would. Jordan like me? Probably not. Um, for reasons. Larry I'm... Fitzgerald, you know, he called me the Hall of Fame. And I'm not in any Hall of Fame, but Larry Fitzgerald called me. Well, that's how you know. If you got the, the cosign from Larry Fitzgerald, then well, yeah. that's basically that. Yeah. Had my arm around him. He put his arm around me and 
rest is his best buds. Dude. We're like buddies now. I mean, I could call Larry. I could call Larry at any time. Rarified air. So I don't know what you were saying. Go ahead. I'm uh, sorry. But yeah, I, Isaiah Thomas, when he got his last opportunity in the NBA, played incredibly well. Um, he's played with a, a lot of heart, which I think we've talked about this Suns team probably needing somebody with that. Uh, he, he's played with, um, you know, the worst situations. Right? He was with the Celtics in the playoffs. His sister died and he played oh, in that playoff sad. series. But with the heaviest heart, like I have all the respect in the world for Isaiah Thomas. I want to see him get a chance with but the he's Suns. Not in any relation to the original. N- no, not at all. Um, but he's still a good player. And how do we we've know been that complaining sure. about a yeah. true point guard? The how team that has one on the sure. roster. It's mm-hmm. him. Mm-hmm. So I don't. That, he's that, on the roster of the Suns. Yeah, they they signed him. You know, they they, when did they that moved happen? him up from the G League recently, like last week. Um, and is and, that why I don't know that he's on the team? Yeah, that would be why. Cause it's a pretty Does Jeffrey. know he's on the team. Well, the, no, I don't think so. Um, hmm. but the, the thing, with so him, you of all the three of us on the show know that Isaiah Thomas with an extra a is on the damn team. Yeah. Well, I'm a basketball dork. Though. Is that what I'm hearing you say that this is, this is, you've not alerted me or Jeffrey I of this, uh, of this move on account of it was the, not the Isaiah Thomas that you would be thinking of. I didn't think to tell you. You know, oh, just, what what did you think of when I when you say Isaiah Thomas? I mean, what exactly? I didn't want. I didn't want to add any I unnecessary confusion. I just think I mean, you would see him out there, and then you would. I mean, know. Isaiah Thomas is on the damn team. I mean, why wouldn't you put the Hall of Famer in? Because he's not the Hall of Famer. He Look, is, man, I, I've been <laughs> just called named after Hall the Hall of Famer by Larry Fitzgerald, and if I say something, it's important. Damn it! We got I'm the Hall of the Famer. They they need they need uh they need the Hall of Famer Randy White in the sun's building uh, no. to, to help make some Cardinals important. Cardinals that's building. true. You know what? That's Clearly. true. Uh, and, and then I'll go Not with the sun's and, and yell at some people. So I mean, then... the sun's pissed me off a long time ago <laughs> when you know, we, uh, Jeffrey and I were doing a morning show and I sent Jeffrey down to try out cause they needed some help. And uh, Dick Van Arsdale, the, the late great uh, Dick Van Arsdale uh, told us to bring Jeffrey down there and wait. So Jeffrey went down there one morning. And waited in the parking building at the security office uh, for uh, uh, Dick Van Arsdale to call. And uh, he never did. Four hours we were on the air from uh, actually uh, uh, four and a half, uh, 530 to 10 a.m. And uh, Dick Van Arsdale, on his word, by the way, never, uh, never called uh, Jeffrey in for a tryout. Wow. And one of my biggest, uh, one of my biggest disappointments in, in, in sports history here in the Valley. That's and I'm sure Jeffrey too. He probably won't say it. Jeffrey probably won't let on that. He's heard about that, but he is. <laughs> I, he I is. didn't, I didn't know this. Oh yeah. He sat there all day. We, we broadcast a uh, morning show live from the uh, security office at the parking garage at uh, the, at what, what is now the footprint center. And uh, Jeffrey was going to have a tryout with the Suns because they needed some help. They needed some back uh, court help. Mm-hmm. And uh, Jeffrey on his church team was absolutely killing it. Wow. And I, I, I called up the, the Suns and we got Jeffrey a, a, a tryout. And, and Dick Van Arsdale himself. And, uh, and no call came. No call. Wow. Okay. I can understand that. That That's uh, I get that. So, you know, we'll, we'll, We'll keep you away from the Suns. We we don't want any any feelings getting hurt no, on there. If end. I if I go anywhere to fire anybody up, it's going to be the the damn Cardinals. <laughs> Fair enough. You know, Larry Fitzgerald, so, he he'll account for me. I I hope that answers your question, Kiss the Cook. I don't mm-hmm. know what the deal is with Isaiah Thomas because he, I think that he's shown enough in the league, and it's been a long time since he's been back. I don't understand exactly what what GMs are seeing where they don't go to him, uh, but. Every time that he gets an he's opportunity, an East Coast guy. That's why. I mean, maybe, but just I, I just want to see, I just want to see him get a chance. And when they were beating the Spurs by twenty on on Saturday, mm. I'm I was shocked they didn't try. Just see what he looks like out there, and if he can still play at the level that you want. And well, I'm shocked that uh, I didn't even know he was on the team. Yeah, yeah. 
Shame. I blame you. And, I, and, and well, when Jeffrey comes back tomorrow, I'm going to tell him that you knew Isaiah Thomas was on this team and you didn't tell us. I, look, I told I, I told you my reason why. It was no, going to cause confusion so. because yeah. without being able to explain the differences mm. between between the two Isaiahs. I think it's over from here. You know, uh, Keon, so, I think uh, <laughs> I know what's going to happen. Go ahead. I, I, I hope you're wrong about what you think you know is going to happen. Mm. Right. I really do. Right. Uh, okay. Flappy Mac right. says, uh, Tommy Lloyd to coach the Suns. Bear down and sweep the leg. Tommy Lloyd? Flappy Max, a, come on. Come on. Flappy Give Max. me a break. Flappy Max, come on. Jiggy says, just chiming in because I haven't in a while. Miss Jeffrey. Well, you know, you miss Jeffrey too. He'll be back tomorrow. Don't we all? He'll be back Don't tomorrow. Don't we all? Who is that? I need to write that down. Who is that? That was... Uh, that was Jiggy. Jiggy. Okay, Jiggy. All right. I, I wrote that down. <laughs> Jiggy. The, the jet. And I don't know if he said this, if this was a typo or <laughs> or if his phone did this unintentionally. Uh, but he says, I really thought DeAndre Eaton, E-A-T-O-N, was the cancer on the Suns basketball team. I'm starting to think that's, that maybe <laughs> it's Booker or who is causing the drama and the issues within the team. Every time he shoots the ball, he falls down and then his mind gets blown away and he starts doing other stupid things on the court. I hope I'm not wrong, but I've really liked him the last several years. Either way, something has to change because they play like crap most of the time. And, and yet, I, I, I don't think that Devin Booker is a cancer. <laughs> uh, right now, I think he's playing the wrong position. Like Vogel was very hell-bent on having him be the point guard. And I thought it could work for a little bit, but uh, I think it got pretty clear about partway through the season. Devin Booker's not a point guard. And no. uh, Bradley Shooting Beal guard. started yeah. handling the ball a little bit more, and it, it was more smooth that way. Yeah. And then Beal got hurt. They went back to point guard Devin Booker, and that's mm -hmm. not a solution to a problem. It, it's, he, he's not a point guard. He doesn't have the mentality of setting other people up first. He's, he is... He is a Booker first kind of player, which to me that I want my shooting guard with that mentality. I want him to be aggressive, get to his spots, know how to score the basketball, even in in difficult situations. There are a lot of things that he does that I like that I want to see from a player that plays his position. But when you put him at point guard, none of those things apply. He's not a guy that that creates for others, at least not naturally or easily. And it shows it shows on on the floor and. I don't know if this is a Frank Vogel problem or where Vogel is just playing Booker there to be stubborn or if it's a uh, James Jones problem where James Jones just didn't feel the need to go out and get a point guard or a Matt Ishbia problem where but he, he they, went they out were and so... got a point guard in, in, in Beal. Yeah, well, the thing is Beal's played point guard. He's not a natural point guard either. Um, he's just, but who's more of a point guard? He's more Booker or Beal? it's Beal. It's Beal. Um, you've but, said it on the show. I've heard you yeah, say it. Yeah. He's cause he's, he's had to play it and he's played it pretty decently. Well, and when he um, plays it for the Suns, seems like he does a pretty good job. Yeah. And, and he does seem to have the mentality of, I don't mind giving up shots to Booker and Durant and Grayson Allen and Yusuf Nurkic. If it makes the team work, you take him off the floor and they don't have that person anymore. And they don't have enough of those people out and that's, there. And, and to me, that's the key right there. You don't have a, a CP3 on the floor anymore. You don't have a, a um, and I, I don't want to say this r the, the, the wrong way. You don't have a distributor. You don't have a, a guy that distribute the, foot, uh, the, the basketball on the floor. Yeah. Like your, your playmaker that makes plays for other guys. You know, you Magic Johnson, Magic Johnson was an amazing, amazing player. But if you look at Magic Johnson's career, you know, from Michigan State all the way through the Lakers and all the championships, he distributed the basketball. That's what made Magic Johnson great. Phoenix Suns don't have that on this team. Yeah, might might be the the greatest playmaker in the history of the game, Magic Johnson, and they don't they're not even looking for a Magic Johnson. They just need they need a playmaker, a they guy who a, willingly does it. Right, and and they and okay, a lot of people can you know they're convinced CP three was a you know was a bad move for this team. Okay, I'll go with you there, but we've got to get a playmaker on this team. We have to get someone 
on this team willing to distribute the basketball. Somebody that can be a playmaker. Somebody that can elevate this team to the next level. You've got the shooters. You got Booker. You got KD. Hell, you got Bradley Beal. You, you've got a decent center in 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 Yurkic. You know, you 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 have everything you need, but you don't have a playmaker on this team. And by by forcing uh, Devin Booker to be the playmaker, it's not going to make it work. I'm sorry, it's not. It's not working, and and I, I I I don't know what to say. I mean, other than this team needs a playmaker, they need a guy to come in here and run this offense. Now, if CP 3s here this year, is it different? I don't know. I, I mean, I, I think that it was the right decision to move on from him because you thought well, you think Bradley Beal's in I, a lot this year. I well, I agree, but he's coming off the bench and he can't stay healthy in Golden well, State. And, and and I agree, I agree. But don't we need somebody? You do, mm -hmm. like a CP3 to come in here and be a playmaker, somebody unselfish, willing to distribute the basketball around. If you get somebody in here. That can throw the ball around. And I, I don't know who that is, Keon. I, I don't know, to be honest. I, 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 I don't know. Uh, you bring in a young talent uh, to, 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 to distribute the basketball around, I think this is a championship team. Somebody that can run these guys, uh, get the ball when, it, when they're open, get the ball in, in, in difficult situations. Uh, to help this team set up a defense and to, uh, to, to, to sink. Remember when Steve Nash was with the Suns? Oh my God, that was a playmaker. Steve Nash could kill you uh, by distributing the ball or by hitting the, the clutch shot. That's what we need. We yeah. need a Steve Nash. I remember I, I watched a game with Steve Nash. Uh, <laughs> he, he had like 21 points and 20, 22 assists. That's like that, it. That's that's a guy right there. <laughs> and um, so, look, I, so I get is what it you're a saying. James Harden? Is it is it somebody like that? A James? If James Harden is on this team, are we a championship contender? That's what I it, have to ask. It's it's easier to say yes. I have problems with James and how he performs in the playoffs, but just from the standpoint of does the guy get other people involved and does he take good shots, efficient shots? James does all of that stuff. Um, and so that, that is somebody, but granted, that's another, that's a name that now you can't afford because of, of a lot of the, the salary sure. cap stuff. Sure. No, I, I but get maybe it. you don't need somebody on that, on that level, you know, like maybe, um, uh, the, the, the wizards have Tyus Jones, like Tyus Jones would be good enough. <laughs> we, <laughs> he plays we need, the position. Well, we need a young playmaker, somebody that's coming in that knows what to do. Got a couple of years experience in this league has got natural abilities, can distribute the, the, the basketball, can move it around to the veterans. Uh, it can make clutch shots. That's what we need on this team. And, and for me, it's not a Bradley Beal. I mean, you could have Bradley on the team. You don't pay him what he's making right now, in my opinion. And you have somebody, a young talent, that, that can move the basketball around. Somebody that's a natural-born leader. Who would that be? I mean, you think about it. if that's the case, Suns, I believe, are a contender. Right now, they're not. They, they don't have that killer instinct. They don't have that somebody that can pull the – they don't have the glue that holds them all together. I know we're up against a break. Yeah, um, and and so we'll, we'll get to your text on the other side, but, uh, you know, some of the free agent point guards that are out there, uh, there, there are a lot of retreads, so you, you might have to pick from among that group of guys, whatever the case may be. Regardless, uh, we've got uh, a lot of stuff to get to on the on the other side as far as more NFL goes. We've got a lot more of your texts here on the text line, so we're going to try and uh, get through as many of those as we possibly can before the end of the show. Uh, we've got On This Date and Big Georgia Sports History and uh, – a bunch of other things as well. There's so, so many things. We'll try. We'll try. Uh, you're listening to The Daily Blender here on 1580 The Fanatic.
This is Brent Musburger's Action Update on 1580 and 99.3, The Fanatic. Get insights into the sports betting market with v betting splits. See where the money is and keep updated on how the market is reacting. Only at vsin.com. Now, here are the latest lines from my guys in the desert. With the regular season opening up in Major League Baseball on Thursday for most teams, Juan Soto of the New York Yankees is the betting favorite to win this year's American League MVP. Soto is at plus 500. His teammate Aaron Judge is at plus 700. Corey Seager of the Texas Rangers, Seattle's Julio Rodriguez, and Houston Astro Jordan Alvarez are all at plus 1,000 to win the MVP in the American League. Over in the National League, Ronald Acuna Jr. of the Atlanta Braves, plus 500 to win the MVP. Dodgers Mookie Betts is at plus 650. I'm Tony Desiri with your VEASAN action update on 1580 and 99.3, The Fanatic. The IRS is the most powerful collection agency on earth. And if you owe back taxes, the news isn't good. The IRS is raising the interest rate it charges on unpaid taxes and further rate hikes are expected. Most people don't know it, but the IRS adds interest charges to your tax debts daily. So if you owe the IRS today, you'll owe even more tomorrow. And it doesn't stop until you get right with the IRS. The good news is getting right can start with one phone call to Optima Tax Relief, America's number one tax relief firm. Optima's tax professionals specialize in the Fresh Start Initiative, a powerful IRS program that can save you thousands if you qualify. In fact, the experts at Optima have resolved over $1 billion in tax debt for their clients. Call now for a free consultation. Call 800-410-6744. 800 410 one zero sixty seven forty four eight hundred four one zero sixty seven forty four. Optima Tax Relief. Some restrictions apply. For complete details, please visit OptimaTaxRelief.com. Imagine your team always looking and feeling their best in high-performance technical workwear. CentOS can make it happen. They have garments for almost every job imaginable. And with the CentOS workwear program, you get freshly laundered garments delivered every week for everyone on your team. Great garments without the bother of laundry. That's a real perk for employees. Find out how CentOS can boost team image and morale. Visit CentOS.com. Oh, I'm ready! And get ready for the work day. So what did the doctor say? He said I might need surgery. Wow, it's that serious. Well, we won't know for sure until I talk with the surgeon, but I'm lost. This is all new to me. The decision to have surgery isn't easy, but neither is living with pain. There is an alternative to surgery. At the Naturopathic Physicians Group in Scottsdale, our doctors are experts in full-spectrum care using a natural approach and can restore pain-free joint function so you can avoid surgery. Patients come in for a variety of issues, including joint pain, chronic conditions, and issues specific to men's and women's health. We also help restore balance in immune, digestive, and hormone systems, which often improves both immediate physical symptoms and also improves cognition and emotional stability. So when traditional medicine suggests you need surgery, how about taking another approach? Call Naturopathic Physicians Group at 480-451-6161. That's 480-451-6161. Or go to naturopathicgroup.com. Hi, I'm Rob Romano. And I'm Neil Lynch. We've been friends for over 30 years. And wait, wait, wait. It's been over 30 years? Yep, you are that old. Well, at least you have one friend. Anyway, we have a show called The Weekend Warriors, Saturdays at 10 a.m. We'll discuss national and local sports, and we'll talk about some sports that you don't hear about much. We'll also interview local athletes, coaches, and sports-related business owners to share their stories with you. We look forward to sharing these great stories and hanging out with you. It's the Weekend Warriors every Saturday at 10 a.m. right here on 1580 The Fanatic. Welcome on back to the Daily Blender. 1580 The Fanatic. Your text driving the show, 888-368-1580. I'll read a few more, and then we'll get to some more of this NFL news that is uh, happening around the league. Um, 9747 says, did somebody already say the Nets have been involved in the – oh, wait, no, hold on. Already read that one. Danny Age and the Celtics worked the Nets in 2013 the way the Nets worked Phoenix Suns recently, except that they didn't. What the what the Suns gave up to get Kevin Durant isn't even close to the haul that the Nets wound up getting uh, after, or sorry, after the Celtics ended up getting afterwards. The, the the Celtics got the picks 
that would turn into Jason Tatum, and Jalen Brown. So no, I don't, I don't think that uh, that's the case. And I also don't even think that the Durant trade is a, a, a trade that might be uh, the second worst trade that the Nets have been involved in ever. The, the Nets traded for James Harden, who never really played any games for them. Mm. They traded for uh, Ben Simmons, who still hasn't played very many games for them and is out again with back surgery. So no, like I don't even think 97-47, I'm, I'm being honest with you. I don't think the Kevin Durant trade breaks the top five trades that the Nets, uh, of awful trades the Nets have been involved in, much less the NBA. And 97 47. Come on. And you for need, the love of God, a, get a texter nickname. Texter nickname. Gotta come on. That. Kind of like Santa's uh, number one helper. You got to have a tech texter's uh, nickname. Come on. But it's, it's not my place to say. I'll leave it to Jeffrey. But if you keep yeah. texting in with no texter nickname, we're going to have to stop yeah. reading these texts. Well, yeah. You I know, mean, it's just, it's, gotta it's the it. one rule we have. It's the only rule we have. Just, just, you know. Don't 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 uh, don't don't cross any any lines on people. You know, don't let's not let's not mock race, religion, that type of thing. And have a text or nickname. Those are like the two rules. We don't have any other rules here. Santa's number one helper says Vogel sucks in regular season. Monty was great in regular season. Monty couldn't get playoff wins. Vogel, maybe. I've seen coaches suck in the regular season and then transform into different people in the playoffs. I don't know that that's true about Frank Vogel. I'm just saying. I've seen it, uh, and I'll leave that there. I'm not saying it's going to happen because I don't think so, but because usually what you are in the regular season, you are some version of that in the playoffs. But it would be fun. Santa's number one helper. It would be fun. Big George says the new NFL rules committee kickoff rule makes me upset. The way they are taking away a key aspect of the football game that always kept the team in a game. There will never be another Devin Hester with these rules. But God forbid they actually fix the overtime rules to be like college or at least have the same rules as in the playoffs during the regular season. Uh, don't agree with you or sorry, don't disagree with you on the playoff stuff and, and on the overtime stuff. But I am going to have to disagree with you with the kickoff rules because it's a it's a it's a there's a potential that this could probably be bad. <laughs> it, it could just be ugly and blow up in everybody's face. But I think that they actually are coming at this with the intention of making the kickoff more likely than it was. And, and we'll see, because only 20% of kicks were returned in the first place last year. So we're already at the place where if we keep the rules the same as right now, there will never be another Devin Hester. We want to see more of those guys. So maybe these rules can help bring that position back into football. I sure hope to hope so, because... Who doesn't love a good kick return? That stuff's exciting. And Neho says the NFL wants to make the kickoff kind and respectful, unlike this show. Good, good point, Neho. <laughs> good, good point. Wait a minute, Neho. I thought this show was kind and respectful. Well, he, Come on. We, we, we were talking about uh, kicking players' asses, and so Neho has decided that actually we what are not. Mean? We are I not mean, kind and respectful. When I say that, I don't mean actually physically kicking their yeah, asses. Yeah, not, not, not literally. Come on. But even even the imagery is not particularly kind. No, because, you, you, because you know what? You you lose to the Spurs. Uh, Motivation. At, at this point in the season where you're supposed to have your crap together, you, you don't deserve kind and respect. Come on, Neo. <laughs> kind yeah. and respectful is not what you Look, got back guys, your way. Let's go out there tonight and just absolutely uh, dominate uh, this team. Just dominate it. That's 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 what I mean. You, you just go into the locker room. You don't say a whole lot to these guys. Look, Katie, uh, score fifty-seven. A book score ninety-eight, and uh, and uh, you know uh, the rest of you guys just pass the ball to book and Katie, and uh, let them score. And let's kick these guys' asses and move on. That's what I'm talking about. I'm not talking about physically going out on the floor and start throwing hands. That's not what I'm saying. Yeah. I mean, no, because that defeats the purpose. What you're trying to do is 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 get somebody psychologically fired up. You know, you kick their ass in a psychological yeah. sense. Mm -hmm. The historian says, "Sound like the NFL is moving towards two hand touch." I, I don't well, know that. I don't yeah. know that. I don't know that that's true either. Yeah. Um, because it's just it, here's yeah. a here's a tackle that that 
that came up and it was actually created as a safer alternative to launching yourself headfirst at a human being. But I, I still think that we can have tackling in the game if you practice the tackling that they teach you from when you're a kid. Eyes up, see what you hit, yeah. <laughs> wrap hit up, the ball. Yeah. finish hit the, the ball tackle. And wrap up. Yeah. Like, there's no reason why that, that, that can't still result in, hit in the hard ball and hits. wrap up. Yeah. Um, but we'll see. My, my big problem with the hip drop tackle and, and the one that I don't see enough people talking about is that hip drop tackles are kind of hard to see in real time. And the NFL has already struggled with plays that are hard to see in real time. Well, I mean, if they grab them by the hips and they kind of uh, pull them down by the hips, that's like a hip drop. Yeah, but but that's the thing is there are tackles that can look like a hip drop because it's not just that you grab them by the hips. It's that you specifically trap the legs in the process. Yeah. Yeah. You, you can't just yeah. it's not just that you, you grab them by the hips and then drop your weight down. It's also yeah. that you trap you trap the defend or the offensive players legs so that they can't move it. So that your weight and their weight falls on pretty much just the ankle. Yeah. <laughs> like that's a dead ankle. I'm sorry. Yeah. There's no yeah. getting around that. Uh, so yeah. that that's what I think the, the NFL is, is trying to eliminate there. And I just think that that's a hard thing to call in, in real time. Like it's, I'm not even saying the referees are going to be bad about it. I just think it's a hard thing in real time to, we'll to distinguish to to which we'll one is the one have, that's not a flag. And we'll which have one to is. wait and see uh, how the referees blow these calls. And yeah, I'm sure like they, a catch. I'm sure yeah. they will. I don't have a lot of faith in them. Mm-hmm. Uh, Randy's chuckle says the touchback now brings the ball out to the 30. I certainly don't want to give them the ball on the 30 yard line to start the drive. I did not realize that Randy's chuckle. See, that's the reading comprehension there mm. that I screwed up. So, yeah. So that's the reason why you wouldn't do the touchback is because, yeah, if you give somebody the ball on the 30, <laughs> If you give Mahomes the ball in the 30 every time, you're, you're going to give up 50 points. Yeah, game. I mean, look, if you're giving him a 70-yard field, give me a break. Yeah, so you you actually should probably try and kick this thing <laughs> in play. Uh, so that's – that's I, I like that. That that kind of gives back a little bit to the, uh, the kicking team in terms mm-hmm. of, you know, a, mm-hmm. reason, a reason to not just punch it out of the back of the end zone. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Against the spread says the Suns have an energy, attitude, and urgency problem. Watching them reminds me of a schizophrenic with dementia doing the same thing over and over again <laughs> and hoping for a different result. <laughs> Their offense is basically give Durant or Booker the ball in isolation and watch. They don't rebound. They don't run the court. They complain to refs too much. They don't get back on D and I, basically have a welcome mat uh, in the paint for their opponents to get easy. Layups. I agree. I Even agree. though Vogel has a punchable face. And is a mediocre coach, he doesn't play. The players yeah. are the ones giving very poor effort. I agree. I agree 110% against the spread. I could not agree more. We, we're on the same page. Yeah. <laughs> we're definitely on the same page. I, Keon and I are on the – I don't know about Jeff Co, but I think, I think would Keon be and I are. Because yeah. Jeffrey's been skeptical of this team from the very beginning. I, I got to tell you, there's just no depth on this team. There's no youth on this team. And you're right. Uh, too many complainers, not enough leaders. Uh, let's go. Let's play some basketball. Yeah. Get, I mean, get, get fired up. Realize these are all games that matter for you and, and start playing some winning basketball. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's all about winning from here out. It's yeah. not about complaining. It's not about getting fouls. It's not about drawing fouls. It's about winning basketball games. So they've, they've got an ability to make up some ground because they're going to be going up head to head against a lot of the teams that are ahead of them. Do it. Make, make that happen because we're talking about half game, one game difference in some of these cases, which is how it's possible for you to drop from six to eight. Uh, Quiet Cannon says, speaking for myself, Randy, head of the White House, we like you. By the way, is Randy short for Randall or Randolph or is it just Randy? Just Randy. Just Randy. My dad wanted to name me Randolph after Randolph Scott, the great cowboy actor. My mom would not have anything to do with that. <laughs> Of course, they're now both dead. And on my birth certificate, it says Randy. Uh, Randy Allen, A-L-A-N. Randy Allen White is the name. Oh, um, mm. Mm. Mr. Wilbur with a text, Randy. All and right. uh, yeah. Well, I'll just read it. He All says, right. Randy, by the way, Dick Van Arsdale is still alive. He's not passed away. Like your parents. Damn, Mr. Wilbur. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. 
And uh, 5521, who has also texted a bunch of times in the past. 5521, you've been texting since. Isn't it time for you to have a texter name? Since at least April. Come on. Isn't Get on top time? of this. Texter yeah. nickname, stat, please, ASAP. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but he says, Randy, he's from Tacoma. This could be about anything, quite frankly, because uh, Texas is 25 minutes old. Who's from Tacoma? That's a great question. Who? <laughs> I don't know. Is Dick Van Arsdale from Tacoma? Is that what he's saying? I have no idea. I, who knows? <laughs> I know Tam, I know Tom Van Arsdale's dead. His twin brother, like my parents, Mr. Wilbur. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> I thought Dick Van Arsdale was married to that gal that's on the, uh, on the Suns broadcast. What's her name? Uh, oh, I don't anyway. know. <laughs> Can't think of your name. That, right that I cannot tell you. Uh, Cliff Dingleberry says, "Bring back Rondo. Um, maybe, maybe Prime Rondo. Rajon not, Rondo, not Rondo now. Um, oh no. No, we maybe we could maybe let that ship sail. Uh, the fifth letter says, "What do you guys think about that fit running the one for the Suns? Who? Oh, okay. You know what? I didn't see the previous text there. Uh, he says Dennis Schroeder." Would have been a great fit to run the one for the Suns. Schroeder? That, yeah, that boy's think, a player, a playmaker first and yeah, can score yeah, as well. I mean, yeah, I mean, I could see that. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. He, he yeah, he would be he would be a very Schreuder good fit. would be a good he would be a good addition, I think, to this team. Because he knows how to move the ball around. And he doesn't need it in his hands either. Right. He um, he's a guy that can uh, can establish plays and he can set up these uh I mean, can you imagine uh Schroeder with uh, uh KD and, and Book on the floor? I mean, uh, by, by the way, that texter that uh, he's from Tacoma. No, I, I, Dick Van Arsdale and Tom Van Arsdale are from Indianapolis, Indiana. I just looked it up. So I don't know. Yeah. So uh, maybe you're talking about something else, 5521. But uh, talking about, can you get a texter name, please? So we can call you something other than yeah. the last four digits of your phone number. Anyway, Rough yeah. Rob says all breaks, no gas, straight ass sons. Mm-hmm. Um. Well, mm-hmm. it's, it's hard to argue with, uh, yeah. with that after what I mean, we saw yesterday. Yes. Um, yes. Who's from Tacoma? I want to know that. Rough, rough Rob, you mm-hmm. spelled straight S-T-R number eight. I like and, that. Um, I like that. Very, very 2004. That's, of you. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's, no, that's. I, are you kidding me? That's, <laughs> that's, that's Keon. How long that's, is that? Come on. That's curtain day. That's certain. That's uh, current day, isn't it? Uh, I, oh. I have not. I have not. Uh, <laughs> i i have not um straight fire i have not sp- spelled anything with a number in it since at least at least early college it's been I a do while. that all i do that all the time you kidding me because no, you're still you're still hip randy well <laughs> you've got the lingo you're still, go ahead you're still with Sorry. it yeah. um also he said previously rough rob uh the sun's loss is what happens when otani gambles so there that is Oh, straight fire. Ham yeah. Sandwich says, yeah. this will make kickoffs way better. Kickoff returns died when they moved the kick back to the 35. Um, can yeah, it, but, they've got, they, but, they, but they're still kicking off from the 35, right? Can they I mean, are, but, um, and oh my God, I can't remember who said this earlier. Uh, maybe, maybe it was, maybe it was quite can it. It was Randy's chuckle saying that the ball is going to be on the 30. If you kick it out of the back of the end zone. So that's your reason to not kick it out of the back of the end zone is it's still going to be kicked from the 35, but you would be better off kicking it in the field of play because if you kick it out of the back of the end zone, it's automatically starting on well, the 30. I, I didn't say that. I, I said if if I if I kick it, uh, I, I think they should move the kicker. If they're going to change the rule, move the kicker back to the 20 and then make it some exciting rule instead of, just every time the guy comes up and he's kicking from the 35. I mean, and a, a modern day NFL kickers just kick it through the end zone. Yeah. I mean, these guys are just going out there and just but, trying to kick field goals from the opposing 35. Give me a break. Yeah, I mean, but he's saying that the, they're incentivized to not just do that because you are giving Mahomes or Allen or whoever a 70 yard field if you do that. Um, so you have to kick it shorter than that, or you will give the other teams a, a pretty advantage. Uh, advantageous field there well okay all right i i could see that okay all right I'm yeah, with you. i think i think that's what randy's yeah. chuckle was trying to say so um ralph has crab says wait did keon just say 
that we are allowed to make fun of race and religion on this show. No. You Americans mm-hmm. really are zany. Did mm-hmm. you hear the joke about the nun on a boat? No. With Raquel Welch? No. no. I literally said the opposite of that, no. Ralph S. Krabs. I said, yeah. you, I said you can't do yeah. that. It, it don't, uh, don't. Don't do make, that. It, no. And also choose a text or nickname when you text mm-hmm. in. Mm-hmm. Those are our only two yeah. rules. Yeah. How did yeah. you hear the opposites? And and don't don't make fun of the dead. Raquel Welch, uh, let her rest in peace. Yeah, please. Um, yeah. So not only is it are, are we Americans not that zany? Um, I'm shocked to learn that you are. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, Walter Mellon says uh, ban them. It's the rules. I don't know what that means. And then he said a little bit later, ban them, too. I, mm-hmm. Walter Mellon, I. You're going to have to add context. I literally do not remember. Ban them. I do not remember. Um, so we, we've, we've finally gotten very nearly close to clearing up this text line. There, there's, yeah. there's only like five texts left to go. So we're going to do this. We're going right. to come back. We're going to clean right. up the text line. We're yeah. going to finish our NFL talk by yeah. God. Yeah. And then we are going to wrap up this show with yeah. a little bit of On This Date in Big Georgia Sports History. Okay. Uh, before you guys text in like four more texts oh lord okay anyway here we go daily blender 1580 the fanatic i'm randy i'm I'm keon that's randy and we'll be back sometimes i struggle to get to sleep my body stopped for the day but my mind is still running so i take zequil zequil the world's number one sleep aid brand has a range of non-habit forming products to fit you and your family's needs invest in a great night's sleep for the best you tomorrow i'm awake and ready to take on anything. Better days start with z Nights. Explore our products at ZQuil.com. Use as directed. Keep out of reach of children. The IRS is the most powerful collection agency on earth. And if you owe back taxes, the news isn't good. The IRS is raising the interest rate it charges on unpaid taxes. And further rate hikes are expected. Most people don't know it, but the IRS adds interest charges to your tax debts daily. So if you owe the IRS today, you'll owe even more tomorrow. And it doesn't stop until you get right with the IRS. The good news is getting right can start with one phone call to Optima Tax Relief, America's number one tax relief firm. Optima's tax professionals specialize in the Fresh Start Initiative, a powerful IRS program that can save you thousands if you qualify. In fact, the experts at Optima have resolved over $1 billion in tax debt for their clients. Call now for a free consultation. Call 800-410-6744. 800-410-6744. Optima Tax Relief. Some restrictions apply. For complete details, please visit OptimaTaxRelief.com. You're expanding your business and need to add to your fleet. Maybe you need another semi-truck or trailer. Don't have the cash? I can help. I'm Dylan Cohen at JR Capital, and we offer no money down financing on new and used trucks and trailers. Whether you're an owner-operator or a fleet manager, I'll get the vehicles you need with a simple application and same-day approval. It's faster and easier than asking your banker. Call me, Dylan Cohen, at 602-834-7353. Or visit moneyradio.com and click on Finance with Dylan. It's March Madness. And the fairy tale ride continues. You can feel the madness. Oh, my goodness. Three-pointer. Good at the buzzer. M- 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 March Madness on 1580 and 99.3. The Fanatic is presented by Harmon Solar, Kasai Japanese Steakhouse, Bet US, and Platinum Plus Cabaret. Catch all the excitement of the men's NCAA College Basketball Tournament on 1580 and 99.3. The Fanatic. Come join American Furniture Warehouse and see our amazing deals on sofas, sectionals, recliners, bedroom furniture and mattresses, dining room furniture and accessories. AFW has the latest styles, largest selection and lowest prices anywhere. Our warehouses are full and ready for you to take your new furniture home today. At American Furniture Warehouse, you'll find the perfect items for your space at a price you'll love. Visit one of our three Phoenix area showrooms or shop online at AFW.com. AFW.com. 1580 The Fanatic and at 1580thefanatic.com Your home for sports Last segment here on the Daily Blender Thank you for joining us today and we're going to try and get to the end of these stories these NFL stories and uh, 
the end of the text line. So let's let's get on it and. Um, Oh, boy. Big George wants to know, because we did have our Isaiah Thomas confusion earlier. Randy, were you named after the famous Randy's Donuts? Those are amazing, and I hear they're coming to Phoenix. No. <laughs> uh, hey, Randolph Scott. Uh, my dad wanted to name me after Randolph Scott. My dad was a big cowboy uh, uh, fan. He was a big John Wayne guy. And... Uh, he grew up uh, idolizing Randolph Scott, so he wanted me Randolph, and so I was not ra I was not named after Rand Randy's Donuts. However, I will say on one epic journey to L.A. with a, a friend of mine, uh, we flew into LAX, and uh, we were supposed to we rent rented a car uh, to go to a uh, to a conference in and in, in the L.A. Uh, uh, conference center there. And uh, and my my friend talked him into a, a a black Dodge Dakota pickup with a V8, and uh, we took the truck out of the lot and burned rubber all the way down the street, <laughs> pulled into Randy's Donuts there in L.A. and got us a, a <laughs> half dozen of donuts, and uh, we burned rubber out of the donut shop, and uh, went on to our hotel to check in, so which was in. Downtown LA did some donuts while you got some donuts and we, 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 we did. Uh, and, uh, uh, and I, I, uh, I will uh, tell you, it was one of the greatest trips uh, of my life ever uh, as a single man. Uh, he, my, my, the guy at the time uh, we were working together and we were on this trip uh, to go. Uh, it was a technology conference at the, uh, if you know uh, the L.A. downtown area, the uh, the conference center is right there by the excuse me, by the Staples Center. Or what used to be called this. Now it's crypto. It's uh, the crypt, right? Mm -hmm. So we uh, yeah, uh, all of that area is very close by LAX and all that business. So we had this uh, this badass uh, black Dodge Dakota pickup truck with a V8. <laughs> and uh, I, I was not allowed to drive the entire time. We ate at the absolute world's worst uh, Mexican food place out on uh, oh, one of the no. piers. Out on one of the piers out there, and it was it was the worst Mexican food I've ever had. And uh, it, 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 we had uh, Randy's Donuts, and we uh, ate at we ate where the uh, in downtown LA. We ate at this uh, this breakfast shop. It was the greatest breakfast. I, I other than Mike and Rhonda's, uh, the place in, here in, in in Phoenix. This was one of the greatest uh, breakfast places I, I've ever eaten at. I mean, uh, pancakes the size of uh, George's head, and George is seven feet tall, so he's got a he's got a head that's even bigger than Bruce Bochy's. If you know who Bruce Bochy is. The biggest head in Major League Baseball. Let's have a big noggin. Yeah. Uh, George's head is even bigger than that. And uh, uh, this place was in downtown uh, L.A. And, uh, oh, it was just a, a, a magical trip. Magical. But anyway. Uh, yeah, it's it was pretty epic. I mean. We brought that we brought that truck back that truck back without any gas in it whatsoever. <laughs> it just ran it down. Oh my god! Yeah. Oh my god! I, I just got some good news here from Flappy Max. Okay. The Lakers are losing. <laughs> Which we always like it when the Lakers lose, but in this particular instance, it's extra mm. special because it helps yeah. the Suns. Um, <laughs> the more the Lakers lose, literally, the better for the Suns. So right. uh, thanks for the update on that, Flappy Max. Flappy Max also says, a point all number texters overdue for nicknames. It's about time. I, okay, here's a rule. Since the NFL rules are, are, are you know, the committees are meeting. Rolling and the, the them out from are, uh, Disney World. Yes, go ahead. Mm -hmm. Here, here's a rule. If you're, if you're a texter and you don't have a texter nickname and you have texted in, I, I don't know what the minimum amount of times would be. Let's Let's call it three or four 
And and so you text it in four times and you don't have a text or nickname. Are you going to lay one down here? Can we can we will read your text because that's what we want. Mm, we still want. I think I think you should just ban them. But you get you get a penalty every time you text it. Oh, like a two minute. Yeah. Two minute. No text or name penalty. And the longer it goes where you have texted in with no nickname, you just <laughs> the penalty, the, the time Damn. in the penalty box is just going to get longer every time. You're just refusing to get a text or nickname. That's on you. Because at this point. Yeah. What are you doing? We, we've gotten some pretty good texts from anonymous human beings, completely mm. anonymous. We, we don't know what to call them. We don't even have a fake name to give them. Nothing. It's just, anonymous confessions of our lunatic friends. Yeah. Look, if you want to, but just, just add a text or nickname to it. No, mm. it doesn't have to be your actual name. People don't have to know it's you, but it mm. helps you. It helps us like tell who's texting us and, and why. Yeah. Um, Rough Rob says, Yes, that's right, Keon. And I don't know what that's in reference to because that was like 15 minutes ago. And I have the memory of point taken, Rough Rob. But point taken. I agree. Noah says uh, Bing Crosby is from Tacoma, Washington. So is Blair Underwood. Did, Did I mention Bing Crosby or Blair Underwood? Can I, you help I don't, me here? I don't remember us talking about I don't of think those we talked about either. So. Mm. D Banks After Dark says, weather report, please. It looks crazy out here. <laughs> mm, well, I can give you a weather report. There's no rain in the forecast currently. 71 degrees under partly scouty skies. And uh, we're looking for 53 for the overnight uh, temperature. I'm not going to guarantee that there's no rain because if I look out the window here at the, uh, at the, uh, the uh, complex, uh, it looks pretty nasty. I will say 79 for tomorrow, 83 for Thursday, Friday, 81, Saturday, 81, and then Sunday, it's cooling off to the mid-60s for Sunday and Monday, Tuesday back up to 77. No real uh, chances for major storms, although Sunday, they're calling for a 45% chance of rain, and on Monday, 50, currently, again, 71 under partly cloudy skies. From the uh, Harmon Solar 1580, the Fanatic uh, Weather Center Chief Meteorologist, Randy White, back to you. Uh, I was going to say Jeff Coe, but uh, Keon. I appreciate that. Look, it's just, mm. it's weird when he's not here. That's all, that's yeah, all I'm going to say about 71 it. 71 now. It's 71 in, uh, 70 in Phoenix. 47 currently in Sedona. 37 in Munns Park. Um, Walter wow. Mellon says the texters without nicknames should be banned. Well, yeah. It's the rules. that. Well, and so I tried to find an even ground there, Walter Mellon, between outright banning people, because we do need people to join the show and interact mm. with the show. It's what makes it mm. the Daily Blender. Mm. But also there should be some kind of penalty for not having a text or nickname after I two agree. months of texting. Yeah, that just that just seems silly to me. The Wiz says now there's six. And I think you mean six texts because there was only five on the text line when we were going to break. Mm. And uh, then the Wiz just decided to bump that number up. So that thanks. Brunswick guy says. Keon, love you, man. You just pulled a Ron Burgundy. If you're Randy and Randy is Keon, who is Jeffrey? Brunswick guy? Mm. Who's on third? That's what I want. Yeah. That's that's it's the only question mm. I've ever had, and no one's told me. Jeffrey's Ron. Um, who's Ron? The conspiracy keeps growing. Ron is, Ron is Jeffrey. Jeffrey's Ron. Oh, boy. So there you go. Brunswick you never guy. see him in the same place at the same that's time. That's true. I don't think I've ever seen them in the same room together. I'm just saying. Big George says, Randy, that is an epic story about your trip to L.A. and Randy's yep. Donuts. You could fill a whole book with your stories of adventures and shenanigans. I could. Yep. Um, Mr. Pink Eye says, I think Jeff makes all the rules, just like how he makes rules for the man card. Well, he is a man card commissioner. So, oh, he's you know. a commissioner, so he gets to make those rules. He has a like a commission that he's got to, you know, answer to. Yeah. And so it's not. Yeah. He he's he's yeah. got regional power, but right. Uh Kiss Kiss the Cook says, huh? It's raining. Mm. I don't know where you are, Kiss the Cook. It's a big valley. It's a big, big valley. Yeah. Um, before I run out of time and have a, a an angry seven foot lawyer, uh, let's get to on this date in Big Georgia sports history, and then I'll All try right. and, and squeeze one last NFL story. In All right, here. here we go. Back in the year 1973, Bill Walton put on one of the greatest performances in college basketball tournament history when he led the UCLA Bruins to its seventh straight National Collegiate Ath uh, Athletic Association Championship. His record 44 points helped UCLA beat an exciting Memphis State team 87-66 for its 75th 
consecutive victory over two and a half seasons and its ninth NCAA title in the last 10 years. Wow. So, that's something right there. Yeah, that's that's really impressive. And Bill Walton is, uh, I think, the, the one of the kings of best that never was. Oh, he's a king. Um, he's in a college, king absolutely sure. a, a monster. But then in yeah. the NBA, the foot injuries, we never got to see how great a pro he no. could have been. Yeah. Um, and then the, the, the last NFL story that I'm going to squeeze in here in like two seconds. Jim Harbaugh thinks J.J. McCarthy is the best quarterback in the draft. <laughs> I believe Jim Harbaugh <laughs> believes that. I also believe Jim Harbaugh is wildly wrong. I don't see it with McCarthy. It's the Daily oh. Blender here on 1580 The Fanatic. <laughs> At Bet365, we don't do ordinary 